Welcome back to another episode of the Vile Files Going Deeper Edition. I'm your host, Nick, joined by the household of Ali, Genevieve, and Derek. Amanda is... Where? She should be back tomorrow. She's back Oh, she's back I tomorrow? Think, yeah. Oh, wow. I believe she flies back to, either today or tomorrow. So all the Amanda stands, fear not. She will be back with us next week. Uh, lots to get into. We have a fantastic episode for you. Sierra and Maya from Summer House are with us for going deeper. Uh, just a wonderful pair. Just really enjoyed our chat. Fun, energetic. We talk, obviously, dating, relationships, their time on Summer House, reality TV a little bit. Really enjoyed uh, the conversation with the both of them. Before we get into our conversation with Sierra and, and Maya, Rachel finally um, spoke. Finally speaks. Finally Rachel speaks. speaks. She breaks her silence. No secret, obviously, we would love to have Rachel on this show. We, we certainly made overtures. I mean, we didn't really know who to get a hold of. And now we know that actually it was, quote unquote, Rachel's team who reached out to Bethany because I will say Rachel's done a good job of kind of being off the grid. But I'm not surprised. You know, we obviously were very critical at times of Rachel. We certainly tried to be objective, but it's not shocking to me that she might not have felt super comfortable in this atmosphere. You know, we would have liked to try to make it comfortable, but obviously we, we wanted to be objective, which is ironic. You know, she did Bethany Frankel's, right? So Bethany, who currently is making a lot of noise when it comes to her, her plight, her, her campaign, her... Yeah, campaigning for her, reality um, stars to basically cause. be paid more. Yeah. Bethany's cause. I'll get into my thoughts in a second. But Ironically, as you pointed out, it started off with Bethany being like, I didn't really watch Vanderpump. I've seen some clips. I don't know what the big deal is, blah, blah, blah. I was like, oh my God, it's Howie Mandel 2.0. Like, <laughs> like, what the fuck? So going in, I, I posted this um, yesterday prior to listening to the interview, which was you know, kind of what I hoped what I would hear and what I was afraid to hear. And what I hoped what I would hear is obviously accountability from Rachel, obviously just, you know, with an unri uninterrupted kind of, you know, long platform podcast of her being able to speak about, you know, this experience, how it affected her, what she's been working on, what she realized about herself, what she is doing or has done to take accountability, not only now and in the past, but going forward. How does she hope to avoid this type of behavior, et cetera? Etc. What I didn't want to see is obviously finger pointing, blaming others, and what I feared, which unfortunately I think my fears came to fruition, was that by doing Bethany's, it would become more about Bethany's cause, about reality TV and the landscape of reality TV, and less about Rachel. I don't fault Bethany for wanting it. And I, I've never met Bethany. I'd love to get Bethany on this show to talk about her, her cause. I mean, listen, if you have a big guest, like, you know, we would love to have Rachel on. Obviously, that episode would have done well. Like, I don't fault Bethany for wanting to have her on. But it, it almost seemed like it was using Rachel for Bethany's cause to make it more about what Bethany wanted to talk about, which is the landscape of reality TV, et cetera, et cetera. And that's what it ended up being. The first 20 minutes, it was a lot of like what you would hope. Rachel talking about therapy, kind of making these like, hey, I just want to say sorry for triggering all the people who have been affected by infidelity. And obviously watching the scandal unfold, it was probably triggering. You know, she said a lot of, of the, you know, right things, if you want to call it that. But every, it's like every time Bethany opened her mouth, she made it about reality TV. And every time Bethany would try to empathize and kind of talk about the evil reality TV world of producers, it just came across as making excuses for her behavior, you know, and it got into... Her talking about whether she was best friends or just acquaintances with Ariana. To me, that's just like fucking semantics or the comments about looking up to her peers in Vanderpump. And some and that came across as an excuse. It came across as a justification for her actions. And even if it's true, I just would have liked Rachel to just say, listen, I, I want to focus on the healing I have really spent a lot of time doing. I want to focus on my choices. And I don't really want to get into reality tv and how that affected my choices i mean both things can be true it's not as if i necessarily think rachel was lying you know when talking about her perception of how being involved in the show affected her and how it played into her decisions but it just comes across poorly bethany was just like 
she mentioned, oh, what's well, Vanderpump? There's a lot of infidelity. You almost get rewarded for cheating, et cetera, et cetera. And Rachel's like, yeah, you know, totally. And now the show's just running to the bank, so to speak. Again, that might all be true, but as far as Rachel goes, it just comes across as making excuses. At the end of the day, you had an affair with someone who was in a relationship. And whether you think that they were the most in love couple or not, or they had slowly become roommates over time and the love was less there than before, that doesn't, that doesn't fucking matter. You know, maybe Tom Sandoval made some statements to Raquel that made her believe something that wasn't true. But when Rachel said, I never would have done it if I thought they were essentially closer than they were. What? You know, to me, it's like after going through this intense therapy, I would have loved to say, looking back, there was just no excuse for what I did. I wish I would never have done that. I don't really care if Ariana and Tom hated each other or they were super in love. They were in a committed relationship and it was wrong for me to do that. And because she's being interviewed by Bethany, who is on this kind of campaign trail about reality TV, it just kind of came across as Rachel making excuses. The second half of part one was just all about reality TV and why it's unfair and why it's essentially not her fault. I felt like listening to the first 20 minutes, it was like, okay, Rachel, all right. She's doing a lot of things. She seems contrite. She's working on herself. And it's, it feels like the conversation Rachel and Bethany had on the second half of part one discredited everything she said in the first half. I feel like I would counter two of those points. I feel like it's inherent that Bethany's going to bring up her cause and well, sure. you know what she's fighting for because of the fact that she got this interview because she used Rachel as an example of someone who had been kind of like played by production and used by production to have a huge payday. So those are automatically going to be linked because that's how they got this interview. And also with the Ariana best friend thing, to me, I interpreted her bringing that up less so as an excuse for why she had the affair. I agree with you. I think it was wild that she said, I wouldn't have done this if I thought that they had longevity. That's a weird excuse. But I think with the Ariana best friend, I think the reason she brought that up is because at the reunion, people were trying to point out Andy Cohen, Rachel, were trying to point out everyone other than Katie has had indiscretions, infidelity, moments, affairs, all these sins, if you will. And Lala screamed across the floor, I wasn't your best friend, ho. Everybody was use utilizing her best friendship with Ariana as the reason why this affair was so damning and theirs wasn't. I don't agree with Lala's take there. And yes, th th there's no question that obviously things were amplified and there's no question that people were capitalizing on this scandal. I'm focused on Raquel. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is Raquel's first time speaking up. And I do think people can be contrite when it comes to infidelity. I do think people can make mistakes and learn from it. So I really just wanted to hear about Raquel and her situation. And this is me as a fan. I just didn't want to have those lines blurred between Rachel having sex and cheating on someone for several months and just they were friends, best friends, friends. They were hanging out. You know, she talked about how Ariana defended her. They were spending a lot of time together. They were friends. She trusted her like we're friends. Are, are you guys my best friends? Not necessarily. You know, are we are you are you're the first people I talk to about every problem? But like if you I don't, you know, I don't know what the equivalent is. If I slept with Natalie. <laughs> sure. You know, it would be. Yeah, it would like. <laughs> devastating. And just because you're not my best friend, it's to me, that's like a semantic argument. And it just waters down any sense of like contrition in terms of feeling bad because it's, oh, it was a lot of, I did this. I'm sorry. I want to take accountability, but let's consider this. Let's consider that. This is why it was, isn't totally my fault. Yeah. And the first kind of uh, schism, I would say in the interview is towards the beginning where Bethany is pointing out, she calls Raquel a persona. A previous persona. The Bethany stuff of it all. Listen, I'm a cynic. If you haven't noticed uh, on the show uh, by listening what? to me, uh, say it isn't so. I've never met Bethany. I've been a fan of Bethany from afar. Comes to reality TV. She's rightfully often referred to as like a legend, iconic character. She's been in the spotlight for 15 years. She's had immense success in this world. And I'm sorry. I just find the timing of this cause of her to be disingenuous. And again, I'd love to talk with Bethany about it, but it is as hard for me to take this seriously for Bethany as she's kind of sitting in her 
ivory tower on her millions of dollars that she's made in her businesses and how she's capitalized. There recently have been reports that not too long ago, Bethany pitched a reality TV show to Bravo, which was rejected. That shit happens all the time. I'd be willing to bet Bethany has probably pitched several ideas. And most pitches are, are not picked up. So it's just hard for me. Why is Bethany pitching to Bravo? Like, how do you she go from being a part of this network and this franchise for 15 years and then like this change her tune again to be clear when it, we're having conversations about reality tv and filming it and you know kind of right or wrong i don't think there ever can be enough work in terms of trying to protect reality tv contestants and their mental health through giving them immense access to therapy prepping them in terms of what they can expect after they're on tv and being in the limelight and how to protect their mental health through engaging with social media and fans. So then what did you think about her point, Bethany's point, that Bravo or Vanderpump has capitalized off of this affair, but as such, Raquel herself wasn't able to afford going to a mental health facility. She had to rely on her parents. I, so if she hadn't had wealthy parents... Criticism? If you're talking about the landscape in general, I think it's fucked up that Bravo wasn't paying for R Rachel's mental health. And I don't think it should have been like a one-off situation where they had a meeting and be like, she took an L for us. We should pay for her cows. What I mean is I think policies should be in place for every network to make the appropriate mental health that is needed for their people. And they should be taking care of that. You know, whether it's Bravo, whether it's ABC, Disney, whether it's anyone, I, I, that's my personal belief. I, I think they should have taken care of that. Again, I, I believe in personal accountability. You know, I, it is as hard for me to hear, you know, again, Rachel was having sex with someone's partner. That's her choice. She made that choice. And if she wants to say, well, I looked up to them and people were cheating. Well, okay. If that's your excuse, fine. But that comes across as naive and, and this desire to be famous. Where is the accountability in, in mine and Bethany's and Raquel's desire for attention to go on this show? And when it comes to Bethany, what's really interesting is that when I think about what, whatever she's campaigning for, again, I think there's a cost to everything. So I feel like if I'm understanding correctly, Bethany, a, a, a part of what Bethany is talking about is more fair compensation for reality TV stars, specifically on the front end. On The Bachelor, they pay the lead. It's real money, whether you think it's enough or not, but it's real fucking money. They don't pay the 25 to 30 contestants that go on the show for a chance to go on TV and a chance to have the opportunities that so many hope they get. To me, that's like front end compensation, the actual pay. Then there's back end compensation. Things like getting a platform, social media, you know, obviously when it comes to actors, you know, there's things like residuals and things like that. And that certainly could be part of the negotiation. But when it comes to negotiation, by definition, there is a give and take with everything. So like I, I mentioned in previous episodes, if they start compensating reality TV stars more on the front end, when in, in negotiations, the, they're going to take away things on the back end, which might include owning the platforms that which they are given from being on the show, like social media. When I was on the show of The Bachelor in the, in the heyday, and many, I think, would argue that that was kind of the golden era to be on that show, you know, Caitlin, Ben season, JoJo, myself, all the way up to maybe Hannah Brown, Peter season, in terms of the ability to go on the show, and if it was popular, getting a bunch of followers. When it was really Caitlin, JoJo, Ben, myself, that was a time where social media was really taking off and really evolving. When I was on Andy's season, Instagram stories didn't exist. There weren't swipe ups. You know, doing social media campaigns wasn't really a thing, not, not to the degree at which it is now. And as a result, even though we signed these crazy contracts that in there said you can't post at all, because those contracts were so archaic, they had a hard time enforcing it. And so even though people were po posting, but there was no mention of anything about campaigns and, and monetizing your platforms. So that benefited people like me and Ben and Caitlin and JoJo because there were just no rules around it. And so we were able to get these deals, make a ton of money. As these networks became aware of how this worked, they started implementing more rules. You know, now that you're under contract, you need to get certain approvals for this, or you can't do this and you can't do that. You know who benefited from it? People like me, people like Ben Higgins, people like Caitlin Bristow, people like JoJo. So on The Bachelor, you have like a, a year window. You're the, mo you're the it kid, so to speak. You're on the show, you're coming off. 
you're the most recent contestants, you're the most recent lead, yada, yada, you're the most popular. And so you're, you're going to get the best deals, right? And then the next season, when you have over two seasons, 60 new cast members, if it's 30 apiece, you're less of the cool kid. It's but what, like car models. It's like, what, well, you are no longer the new and shiny object. There's yeah. a new one on the lot. But what happened when, these, when Warner Brothers started implementing these new rules saying, well, actually, in this year contract you're under, you have to get certain approvals. You can't do this. You can't do that. So those deals that would otherwise go to the cool new kids went to the old kids. So that really benefited people like myself and Caitlin and Ben, and not in any situation, but it, it just became, we were easier to work with. They didn't have to go through so much red tape to have access to these new contestants. I bring that up because it just sure seems like some of the things that Bethany is talking about is going to benefit Bethany the most. And it's going to make sure that new reality TV stars who, you know, she might get more you know, better paychecks up front and might make a quick $30,000 for filming a season. And I don't know what they negotiate. But again, if they get that, they're going to have to give something up. We were talking to Sierra and Maya. And after we were recording, I was asking about it. And it's my understanding that in, in the Bravo contracts, they have what is referred to, I don't know officially, but like referred to as the Bethany Frankel Clause, which essentially is if you start a business as a result of going on our show, the franchise gets some sort of percentage of that. And like the Bachelor franchise, Bravo was like, wait, hold on. They started a business to get to this. Wait, we're not going to let them do that going forward, right? So it just seems like Bethany, who's not going to be affected about, uh, by this one way or the other, if this kind of snowballs and becomes a thing, Bethany won't be affected by this at all. The new people will be affected by this, and they might get more things on the front end, but m my guess is their ability to become a Bethany will be greatly reduced by, by all the kind of red tape and the handcuffs that they have. And so what will happen is, you know, the ability to become the big star and make the big bucks, so to speak, will be harder and harder for everyone. And yeah, more people on the front end will be compensated. So, you know, if you go on The Bachelor, it, let's say this is like a a landscape through all of reality TV, maybe night one, the people who go on the show might make a quick 2000 bucks. You know, maybe they're, maybe it's like, Hey, $500 a day of filming and they're filming for a day. And so instead of making zero, now they make 500 bucks. Great. Well, on the back end, it's just going to be harder and harder. I think because if these networks agree to X, they're going to ask for Y, so to speak. And I'm not saying what should be done or not. I'm just saying I'm, I'm speaking from personal experience of the fallout of how these things seem to work. And I just have a hard time believing that Bethany is doing this because of some sort of altruistic cause that she's just worrying about the poor reality TV star. Well, and it's just like the scales have to be balanced at some end. So like you said, if, if suddenly we're pushing all this payment to the beginning, it's got to result in a back end kind of, well, we want you to do a deal with these people because yeah. we get this kind of cut. Yeah. Because I just don't know where like the funding necessarily comes from. Well, well the, the networks, but just think back to like, if you're negotiating, keep in mind, like all these reality TV stars, including myself and Bravo people, like they are only offering their willingness to go on TV and be filmed and, and that vulnerability of, and, and being dramatic. And that is just, when you talk about supply and demand, the supply is essentially limitless. And this kind of, society of America that we have. You're not coming from a point of power when it comes to negotiation. So the negotiations are going to be about just kind of the bare minimums and just being fair and things like that. But that is going to allow these networks to say, well, if we give you this, you're going to have to give us that. Yeah. Media has become like such a franchise now. It's not just the reality show. It's literally, you're thinking about it. It's the podcast. It's the live events. It's the deals. It's the social media. Yeah. When you're signing up for a reality show, it's really the businesses, it's everything that's tied to it. It's become a franchise and that's the shape. If I'm a network executive, I would be like, yeah, let's, let's fucking start paying them. And you know what? Every podcast that has started, everything they've done, we, because they wouldn't be able to start any of this without us. Yeah, we'll pay them. But I want to own all that on the back end or I want a huge cut or I want to own that IP. I mean, if I wanted to be on TV, I wasn't thinking about podcasts. I wasn't thinking about deals when I won the show. I was just like, this would be a really cool experience. And I don't know what's going to come of it. Maybe something really cool. But ultimately, it's just like a cool experience. Now, it's different like on the Bravo side of things when you have like recurring seasons, you come back and things like that. And when they talked about on the on the podcast, 
about like the, the, the fix, the drug. We all love attention. You don't sign up for reality TV and agree to immerse yourself in a world that rewards drama, rewards scandal, knowing that full hat. And then when you're part of that drama and scandal, act like it's evil and wrong. We are talking about reality TV and drama. If you're saying, well, you can't record a TV show that doesn't have drama and doesn't have this, like what, what do you have? What are you signing up for now? I mean, to give Bethany the benefit of the doubt, like I could see it starting from a place of mental health and then her baking in all of these financial issues and her thinking, I'll be kind of the headliner of this issue because I don't know that there is a a new Bethany that would get the attention that she's bringing to this issue. Yeah. I I don't don't, don't know that a newbie could do that. She's not going to feel like she's... I mean, that's to give her the benefit of the doubt. And then to go back to the podcast... I do agree that this felt like, you know, the Rachel part one, it felt like a vessel to speak about this. On that end, too, I I think something that I learned from, you know, that that whole like spiel and and rant about this is her saying when the cameras are on you, it it feels 24 seven and it feels like the ship is or the train is going and it'll never stop. And so not to defend Rachel and what she did, but I can imagine that like more than her feeling like she wanted attention from Tom and that he was like forbidden and, you know, like addictive that the moments between them, because up until March, no one knew, not even the cameras, that mm-hmm. that must have felt like the only real thing happening in her life. True. Yeah, that, that was like and the biggest like, thing that I took away from He has to care about me point. because it's not for the show. Exactly. This has to be real because there's no cameras here. Yeah, yeah. Th- this this is the only time the train is renewed stopped. for a next season. This is yeah. someone who actually, and she even said that, validates me, listens to me, gives me sure. the space that I wanted. A good point. I'm just saying, how is it, what does that have to do with why she did what she did? Why is that an explanation? I mean, if, to me, it's like two separate conversations. And that's why, it's, as a fan, I wish Raquel, you know, forget about we would have loved to have her. I'm just saying why the interview with Bethany, I think, discredited Raquel. Because I think it's two conversations. Like, we can have a conversation about reality TV and what's right or wrong. And there's certainly changes, I think, can... There's improvements that can and should be made. I'm all for that, right? It's just these people, this is their lives. You know, Katie Maloney, Ariana, they've been doing this for a decade. They've agreed to make their job part of their life. They're not the only people where their profession and their personal lives are blurred. And they're, it's just kind of one and the same. They have just chosen this incredibly unique profession, right? And so... Their life is their profession. Katie and Tom were married. They met on the show. They got married. They had a wedding on the show. They basically had a divorce on their show. They're going through healing on the show. Does it make it less real for them? Well, I I think the point I'm making is like she's given a bunch of reasons on this podcast and we've kind of been spending the last 20 minutes discrediting them. Like her saying, I never would have done it if Tom and Ariana weren't close. We were saying that really doesn't matter. The point I'm making is... Katie and Tom have been on this show for like their entire adult lives. Yeah. Rachel, this happened so quickly for her because she tied herself to kind of one of the larger cast members, James, and then they got engaged. And then now this thing with Tom, it's blown up for her really quickly. And I think someone like her needs those off camera moments. Like I think Katie is able to kind of navigate the cameras and real life and make a marriage between them, whereas Rachel really isn't. And so this off-camera relationship with Tom, she gave a lot more importance to. The point I'm making is I think that's the reason. And I think I realized that through this podcast. She did this because it was off-camera and it was secret. And she really needed reality during this filming experience, more than anyone else that I've ever seen on reality TV. This is, to me, a really terrible excuse. Well, for sure. I'm I'm not defending. I'm not defending her. It's not making it okay. It's just, it's interesting to kind of get into someone's brain. Yeah. And understand, like, what might have clicked for them. Why they wanted something. Tom, I mean, Tom has, that's not an excuse that works for Tom. Because he's been on the show for 10 years. Raquel's been on it for how long? Not 10. Not 10, but I... I thought she joined in, like, season five or something. She's an adult. But she was so minor oh. until, like, she wasn't followed around in all aspects of her life until... Sure, but, like... Probably th- so two or three years ago. is it just Rachel, who her whole life, even she mentioned, she, you know, was vulnerable enough to admit just the need for validation. Then she was in the pageant world, which obviously kind of compounds that, you know, that's a validation type of world. And then, you know, she goes to reality TV, and granted, she's 
knew and she, it basically this is all about like some inner child and trauma or whatever she experienced in her child and this need for validation this being addicted to uh, the idea of love rather fine but like she still went on the show and she still did this for a validation and attention and maybe this was the wrong atmosphere for her but whose fault is that we seem to be wanting to associate blame with why rachel even found herself on this show and at the end of the day honest question as people who haven't been on reality TV and who have watched the show, what is a network supposed to do to qualify who is right for this type of show? They do a psych test to make sure, you know, and I don't know if it's a standardized test between company to company, and I don't know what their parameters are. You know, hopefully they have some high parameters. Are they supposed to cast people who don't have, you know, past demons or I don't think it's Bravo's well, like, fault per se. And I don't think in adding this context and kind of just trying to understand Rachel's brain a little bit more, it's again, it's not us giving her a pass. It's not us putting all the blame on Bravo. It's not us saying it's okay because it's not. It's just like little tidbits of her that came out in this interview that maybe we haven't been able to see on the screen in the Raquel that we knew in the Vanderpump world. I guess it's just to me, I feel like she said a lot of what I felt like meaningful things in the top half of the interview. And then the second half of part one kind of discredited everything she said. And it sounded like she was pointing the finger. And Granted, Bethany brought up the, the video, the FaceTime video. Fucked up that Tom recorded it without Rachel's permission. That's fucked. It just, it got into the weeds. And it just, to me, felt like a lot of, at the end of the day, we got more, as many excuses, if not more excuses, than we got, you know, statements of accountability. What you're kind of pointing at is that Rachel has been off the grid. She's been removed from filming. She's been in a facility. She's been isolated. And it would have been really nice in this podcast to just focus on that her experience, kind of remove the noise of the show and just focus what she's done, her accountability. And we kind of get that. And start. get into it. Like, yeah. what is, I would like to know the history of Rachel, what she really discovered. And, you know, again, she doesn't have to share that if she doesn't want to. If that's a 100%. personal journey, that's fine for her. But as a fan going on a show to have some sort of tell all, that's what I was hoping to hear. But it came across as a couple of like, all right, well, make sure you say this, make sure you acknowledge this and make this statement. But what she really wanted to talk about, it seemed like why it was unfair, why she was wronged, why how the producers took advantage of her, et cetera, et cetera. It's like no one made you cheat. You know, no one made you lie about this. And you can come up with all the excuses you want, but it makes me believe less that you are really willing to, you know, move forward with like doing the right thing i I don't know you know but i guess we'll see what part two has to hold to i'm interested anyway it was it was interesting i want to believe that bethany is uh doing it for the right reasons so to speak it's i'm a skeptic the timing is off and um i guess it just didn't land for me but Curious what you guys think. It's a certainly interesting conversation. Don't forget we have another episode of Better Date Than Never live tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern. Certain to be wild and fun and we're sharing our relationship stories, sharing best practice, sharing our past experiences. It's a, lot, a ton of fun. Don't forget we have an update special dropping tomorrow behind Vile Files Plus. For those of you who love the updates, there are so many available to you now behind Vile Files Plus. Let's go to vilefiles.com to sign up. It's free to sign up. All right, let's get to Sierra and Maya. Drizzly is here to be your partner in parties, meaning that they are here to help you take the grunt work out of the get-together so you can be a confident host and actually party at your own party. That's right. Drizzly is the number one alcohol delivery app for the beer, wine, and spirits that you need with delivery to your doorstep when you need it. They have great brands like Sky, Campari, Wild Turkey 101. I myself am planning my birthday party for this weekend. I wanted some signature cocktails and nothing says summer birthday like an Aperol spritz. There you go. Drizzly has Aperol. I love Aperol and it's hard to find sometimes, but you know they always have it. Their selection is impressive. We could go on for hours talking about all the selection that they have from beer, wine, and spirits. And whether it's a party that you're planning, maybe you run out at a party, it's great for that. Maybe it's just great for a bottle of wine and you don't feel like going out in inclement weather. They make it easy and convenient. So when you're in need for some beer, wine, and spirits, think of Drizzly, the most convenient way to buy beer, wine, and spirits with delivery to your doorstep when you need it. Drizzly is the go-to app for drink delivery. Everyone in the household has benefited from Drizzly and use the app Download the Drizzly app or go to drizzly.com. That's D-R-I-Z-L-Y.com. Again, drizzly.com or download the Drizzly app.
I used my weekender bag over the weekend. I was house sitting and babysitting and I didn't want to bring a whole suitcase just for one night, but it was the perfect amount of space. I was able to slide in my laptop, my keys, my toiletries. I had my shoes in the bottom part. I had my PJs. I had a change of clothes for the next morning and it just looks so sleek and stylish. And I just showed up and I said, oh, hello. Is it me or Shay Mitchell? I do not know. Shay Mitchell is rocking the luggage world. Base was created by Shay Mitchell to make sleek and affordable bags, luggage, and accessories designed to help you travel efficiently while still looking fashionable. There are certainly fashionable luggage. The quality is wonderful. Their luggage comes from multiple sizes and colors, and for shorter trips, the Weekender bag, as Ali mentioned, is super functional. It even has a place to store your shoes separately. Whether you're packing for a quick trip or looking to breeze through the security line, Base has your personal items covered. So if you're looking for high quality, high fashion luggage at a reasonable price, you got to check out Base because they are crushing the luggage game. Right now, Base is offering our listeners 15% off your first purchase by visiting BaseTravel.com slash V-I-A-L-L. That is B-E-I-S Travel.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Go to BaseTravel.com slash V-I-A-L-L for 15% off your first purchase. Again, that's BaseTravel.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Sierra, Maya, welcome. Oh my God, thanks for having us. Thanks for coming. How are your hearts? Ooh, heavy. Uh, We start heavy. This is how we lit off every show. (laughs) And now I just find it fun because everyone just seems to be slightly triggered. How much time do you have? (laughs) It's like, are you talking family, relationships, personal? (laughs) We talk all of the above, Sierra. Uh, But ladies, how are you ladies? Good. I mean, first two, three times in LA, I feel like, you know. You said that two or three times. Which one is it? Two or three (laughs) times? I don't don't even remember, but I feel like not enough to like even really remember. Okay. I feel like now I'm such a New York City girl when I'm kind of not only been there for two years, but yeah. I don't know. I know LA a little bit better than you, but also I almost moved to LA and then I was like, not not with the traffic. What happened? Well, okay. So I was with an ex at the time. Mm. We like came out, did the whole tour of it, whatever, whatever. I was like, I'm not ready to make the plunge. My family's in Boston. I didn't want to be that far from them. And I can't imagine like sitting in the car. I'm an angry driver. (laughs) And I was just like. I can feel your rage talking about driving. Well, like we sat (laughs) coming uh, here. uh, (laughs) We sat in that car for like 10 minutes not moving just to get here. And I don't that I don't have the patience. for. I mean, I fucking hate driving. So, yeah. But and you do it every here. day. <laughs> well, I uh, I live in the valley now. I tend to stay in the valley as much as I can now. I live 10 minutes away from here. So okay. I just make it work. You know? Yeah. I feel like you just I have to be strategic about it. Yeah. You know? Like, yeah. you you guys should have, like, seen the traffic and then just been like, I'm not coming in, Nick. I'm being strategic about <laughs> I traffic. almost, like, DM'd him, like, you're not going to see this, but, like, can't make it. Yeah. <laughs> not yeah. worth it. <laughs> How about you, Sierra? I actually like driving. I, like, I kind of, I'm into it. I grew up driving. I like a nighttime drive. It's chill it's a way of calming you down what yeah, do you do do you sit LA in your driving. thoughts or do you sit like my, podcast oh or no do you i li- sit in my thoughts sit i'm a thoughts. sit in silence type of girl okay like for an unreasonable amount of time do your yeah. partners former partners what do they think about i'm a sit in silence <laughs> kind of guy too but it, in relationships i have been told that it's it's weird art yeah, yeah it's weird it's yeah. weird i hard have, to read yeah you're mysterious you know, myster- yeah mysterious <laughs> yeah Honestly, it started from when I was like in the hospital full time and I would hear alarms in my head. As a former nurse? Yeah. Mm hmm. And I would hear alarms in my head. And so on my ride home, I would always just sit in silence because I needed to like come down from it. So then it would like bleed into like being at home and sitting in silence. And now it's just something that like I find great. I can I can be alone with my thoughts. But I do realize people will come over and I have like nothing playing, no music, no TV on. She's like, are you I, a I do that a lot. I, I do that a lot, too. Yeah. Okay. It's not that weird. It's, yeah. it's so nice to meet someone that does that, too, because society just tells us that you're supposed to be an extrovert and you're supposed yeah. to be friendly and smile all the time. And yeah. I'm here to say, like, no, no. Fuck Wait, point to get me. I'm the opposite of friendly or smiling. <laughs> no, I'm saying because like this, this is a good little trio we have yeah. going here because we're kind of like that same way. Yeah, I'm like, very introverted, people, but I need like sound because otherwise yeah. it's like the thoughts are racing. Yeah, I just feel like sometimes it sounds like overwhelming. 
I'll do that too. I'll be driving for a while and I realize like, I've just been sitting in silence just, for 40 minutes. Yeah. I feel like normal people have been listening to music of some kind. Yeah, a podcast. Yeah, yeah no. sometimes. You ladies are my first summer house guests. Oh my God, yeah. Pop in the cherry. You probably don't know this, but over the past six, seven months, I have immersed myself into and Bravo. I've actually, I've noticed. Universe, and it's been really enjoyable. Some for housewives? Yeah, yeah what, some housewives, it for you? Some Vanderpump. <laughs> little yeah. Scandaval, yeah. Oh my, little Scandaval? Little sc- like, yeah. I've been Scandavaling it up. Yeah. You and guys you met, met him. Tom Schwartz. Yeah, were or, you there on Have you met the Toms? Yeah, so I met the Toms first on Winter House. They came out for a weekend. It's like, we filmed Winter House 17 days, and- mm. Season two, we kind of cycled some people in and out, and the Tom Schwartz and Sandoval came for a weekend, and yeah, kind of like made us their concoctions of cocktails and had a good time. And yeah, there have been a lot of critiques about both of their characters, more specifically Sandoval, right? But by default, Schwartz Schwartz, a bit guilty by association. Um, Anything from sociopath to narcissist to all of the above. You ladies spent sixteen days with them. What would be your take uh you're non non expert you yeah. know you're just human to human just, take what's your read on them i recently spent days with tom sandoval oh wait yes i <gasps> heard oh, yeah. on the space yes space, not space not the, not the not space, space show he, and he brought sports. the picture right <laughs> oh that's uh, on short. the army show yeah oh uh, yes uh, special forces he brought the picture yeah yeah that's weird fucking weird but <laughs> why wait why, why is it weird are you talking about like he got like a five by nine printed out of her it feels like clickbait I'm not trying to defend Tom Sandoval. No, 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 but we're just, yeah, we're conversing. We were in a high stakes, high pressure environment. The show I was on was insane. It was a true like simulation of special forces training, not like a show that was kind of like, they were like, this is a simulation. And it was like, if you want out of the simulation, raise your hand. Otherwise you're in the simulation. Was there a safe word? Kind of. Yeah. Like, damn. Nope. (laughs) Or nope. no, you would have you have to take your armband off. But other than that, you were literally in their world. In the the they called them the DSs, the drill sergeants, and they didn't give a fuck. Yeah, I mean, the, I'm sure yeah. they were. Like, it was wild. It was stuff. a wild experience. But I only say that because, like, I know when I say, "Oh, Tom Schwartz," you know, I say that. I think a lot of people's reaction was, "Oh, he did that to kind of like garner sympathy." It was some sort of calculated move. And I'm like, I'm just saying, in the environment in which yeah. we were in, wait, he, Sandoval. I don't, Sandoval. Yeah. I don't think he's that forward thinking. Mm. You call him stupid. Basically. Just, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I you call him right stupid. Up on I'm that. just saying, I just don't know. If... Okay. So when we were in Vermont, he was there for only like two or three days. So, three days. I know I keep doing that two or three days. <laughs> yeah, two or thing. three days. That's like, my thing. I don't know what why. What comes after? <laughs> <laughs> well, before we started, you were like, I don't I know like, if I, I get to 11. To yeah. <laughs> You're like, I don't know if it's two or three. <laughs> anyway, I'm just fucking with you. Oh, um, really. Anyways. But for three days, and I have to say, Schwartz, I thought, was so sweet. Loved him. He was kind. He's very great. affable. Just, yeah. yeah. That Minnesota, yeah. Yeah, right. he just Midwestern seems like, boy. yeah, Midwestern, just all around nice. Sandoval, however, I did kind of find him annoying. The sound of his voice was, like, annoying. He talked a lot about himself, his business ventures, himself. And that was just, like, on an hour-long car ride to the mountain. Mm-hmm. But you know what? I was like, okay, well, I don't really know them that well. I'll take it for face value, and hopefully I won't see him again. You didn't exactly warm up to Sandoval. No. Yeah. I mean, this man pulled out a fucking sequined blazer on a Tuesday night in Vermont. Yeah, I was tracks. like, interesting choice here. Well, that that was my biggest takeaway with Sandoval, which yeah. everything he would do it was more like, okay. Yeah, like, like it's is it seems- authentic, though? Is, I don't no, know. No, but that's, I do think it is. You do. You I think, think it's genuinely is, who he is. Yes. I don't know. I've never met him. He is a unique person. Yeah, he is a, unique. He, yeah. Whether that's for you or for anyone else, but I, yeah, I don't think it's a front. No, mm-hmm. I don't yeah. at all. I think he truly is into the things that he's into. <laughs> yeah. You know? <laughs> so. Yeah, I feel like I'm, like I'm being trapped. I know. I'm, I was like, I want to say. He's just an eclectic say, human. Eclectic, yeah. yeah. Well, you yeah. know what? I look forward to meeting him one day. Yeah. I mean, you can't paint, I can't paint my nails white anymore because it's like people think that like in the Bravo world. Or God know. forbid you have yeah. a lightning bolt anywhere. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you... Well, guilty by association. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. In support of. Yeah. Like I'm... even on our show, the people started to be like, oh, I'm talking to my friend's husband. They're like, oh, are you going to like, are you going to Raquel them? And I'm like, or Rachel, Rachel them? Recent study. And I hope this isn't triggering for you. <laughs> But a recent study said nurses and doctors are more likely to cheat than athletes and DJs. Athletes? 
Really? It, that must be an ego thing. I don't know. I don't. I but mean, honestly, I'm gonna confirm. It, it was more. Oh, really? Okay. So, I'd yeah. say. Okay, one time it was more doctors than nurses. They were totally, dumping healthcare the doctors, workers in. It was like more, and men also but I think were more we, guilty. Like, deducted Talker. why? Like there's reasons why. You know, you have the overnight shifts. You have really long yeah. shifts where you're not from home. I know a lot we're of justifying people, this behavior. No, but when we <laughs> no, did, no, there are reasons. Yeah, but, <laughs> <laughs> but I think it makes sense. I'm not saying it's right, but I think right. when you think about how long their shifts are. like Tom are. Sandoval right yeah. now. <laughs> no, but it's like, and then also we were discussing when we talked about this, a lot of uh, people I know in the medical profession mm -hmm. end up marrying like their high school sweetheart or someone because they're in school for, yeah, so, for long. so long. So they're not going out and like meeting other people. Also, you're in high stress situations and like that'll bring you closer to someone yeah. in, in a different way. Does yeah. that mean like they it. are cheating with their coworkers? I believe so. Yeah, yeah. for okay. sure. So it's lot, like very great. There's anatomy. a lot of sex going. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Was, uh, like yes. on call room sex. Want to yeah. hear crazy story one of our doctors and one of my crazy stories <laughs> one of the doctors at my hospital that i used to work at he was cheating with one of the like nurse practitioners and did everyone know and like everyone soon secret? came to find out because well i think they were fucking on the helipad <gasps> so like they were going to pick up a patient that was being flighted in and yeah, people caught them so on the, the helicopter. Like a bird's like eye view. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah the, like, the patient wind. might but not. Like, but... but there's like a little double door area where you can go in. But like, there's just like a little two couches there. And so, yeah, people coming to get a patient, you know, the the rapid team. And yeah, they're, they're up just there fucking. just kind of like fucking. And well, then why would they put couches there? Kind of asking for people to fuck there. Well, yeah, I isn't mean, that like a totally like, like coming in and rushing out? What, every yeah. couch you've seen, or what are you guys doing in the studio? And I'm not here. <laughs> yeah. well, like, well, there's a couch, Nick. Like, <laughs> also, not to mention, like, oh, are you getting off at the fact that we're about to go pick up a patient right now? Yeah. Who's like, damn, he's in dead. dire. Like, like, yeah, yeah <laughs> like, let's just get a quickie in right quick. The hospital soon came to find out because I think she was actually engaged. And the husband came and oh, created no. a whole scene. There was like a bolo. Did anyone get fired? A bolo put out. We ha like A bolo? Yeah. What's like a bolo? Be on the lookout. Be on the lookout for this guy because he came. <laughs> Is that like hospital. a code hospital word? Yeah. Oh, Do I know I bolo from true crime. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's mm -hmm. what I thought of. I thought you meant like a bolo tie. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> I was that thinking was of like, a hat. Or something. <laughs> I mean, yeah, Georgia, but. Uh, be on the lookout for the cheaters. For the woman's There'd be people fiance. fucking. Oh, for the oh fiance. because he could come oh, in and like fuck in, shit up, He basically. came in with rage, yeah. Have it's either true. of you been involved uh, in any type of infidelity, whether as a, a, a victim or a perpetrator? Victim. Victim. victim okay never well, a perpetrator welcome to the club yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah oh you've been cheated on oh, too for sure yeah did you know or did you have an inkling or did and how did you find you? out <laughs> wow uh, <laughs> i did not have an inkling i was told by people uh not from her but afterwards it was more of a Okay. Like mm. it, yeah. it's like I didn't think, you know, you choose to trust your partner. Kind of right. 20, 20. And you kind of look out the other, you know, like, yeah. And then you find out and you're like, oh, well, okay. My first initial reaction was this feels more believable than I want it to. Yeah. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. where it wasn't like, that's not possible. Yeah. It was like, especially who it was allegedly with and things like that. And you're just mm. like, mm -mm -mm. yeah. So how about you, ladies? Yeah. I dated a guy for two years and. It was like right when I was graduating from college and I thought that like, oh, I was going to graduate. We would like move in together or something and come to find out this bitch messaged me on Instagram mm. two weeks before my graduation. The I'm one like, who was doing the cheating. Yeah. The girl that he was like cheating with. Okay. Like she messaged me on Instagram. She was like, hey, are y'all still together? Because he's like saying that you're not. And like we've been talking for over a month now. And like I just like girl to girl. I'm trying to find okay. out. Well, good for and her. I was like, oh, OK, yeah, like. We're still together and, you know, <laughs> but anymore. you can have him if you want him. She's like, OK, well, do you want to see all the messages? She sent me everything, you know, everything. Did she stay with him? She no. I was young. I was dumb. I was real weak then. But <laughs> I um, I was thinking that like, OK, you know, because I talked to him about it and it was like a huge blowout fight. And we we're thinking, oh, maybe we'd get back together. It's my graduation. I was just trying to get through graduation. My mom was like, what? Like, you know your boyfriend's not going to come all this stuff. And then soon after that, I found out like it was just like several other different girls. And then I was like, eh. I mean, I graduated from school, starting my first job. I moved out on my own and I was like, I'm actually going to be single so that I don't even have to deal with this. And I'd rather be alone than be jealous because I feel myself mm. becoming so jealous. Did you heal from it though? Like, 
Yeah. Or did you just like compartmentalize and kind of push it down? No, I definitely. Okay. I, you, dude, I had to go through so much therapy after okay, that. Okay, you went to therapy? It was, it was really triggering because I feel like in that relationship, I found out, you know, my mom had been cheated on by my dad. And that was something that he watched me kind of go through and try to figure out. So I was so insulted at the fact that, you know, he turned around and did that to me. And then I spent a couple years just being on my own and being by myself sitting in silence, but also doing therapy and trying to like get back to myself. Mm-hmm. I stayed true to myself in the sense that I would rather always, and I always said this, I would rather be alone than be uncomfortable or be this version that someone kind of made me out of like fear of rejection or like my abandonment issues or just trying to live up to someone else's, I don't even know, standards, I guess. I just, yeah, I had to take time for sure. It uh- was... How about you, Maya? Yeah, I've actually been cheated on semi-recently. Semi-recently? Yeah. Mm-hmm. How um, is your heart? We're like still in the healing we're phase healing. for sure. I can think... we help? Can we? <laughs> I mean, we can like break it all down if we need to. Let me ask you this yeah. question. When you're alone in your thoughts, mm-hmm. the three of us often are. Yeah. <laughs> um, what is the question you keep asking yourself? Because oh if you're God. alone in your thoughts, you ruminate, I'm assuming, a lot. And if you're like me, which I don't know if you are, we can obsess. Yeah. And same. and what is a question that you find keeps you keep having a conversation with yourself about? So I think my biggest like anger, like my my point of rage the most is that he was so he was the one that was consistently like we need to like we should be together. Like let's make this official. Let's like let's oh, be okay. serious. Let's talk about the moving it. Let's do all those steps. Like we were in therapy together. We were like setting up this like doing couples therapy too. Correct. Like this foundation. And early on. And early on, which, you know, some people would like disagree. I'm but, like a big believer in that. But therapy, I thought it was you know. no, I thought it was like a great move, you know? Like we're not all built with these like great communication skills. Right. And so, I was no, like I mean, if you do therapy correctly, yeah. all it is is just like a way to basically keep your mental health or your relationship like in shape so right. to yeah, speak like totally. people who go to the, the gym, gym on the regular mm-hmm. like, and that's yeah. how we viewed it yeah. so i'm like and he and he was the one paying for the therapy like he was the one that was consistently suggesting all these things that yeah. were setting us up for like what seemed like this future and then to find out that he was also cheating it's like well what what the fuck is the point why were we doing really all that you, you yeah know? for sure how'd you find out he like soft launched me on ig and then i got a dm from a girl that was like girl to girl like is that your man basically and like that's that was all i needed to i was like that text said it all did He's, you confront him i did he was not honest for it was like literally a month of trying to figure out the truth and then still and then like too. then we broke up because you know the yeah. fucking truth and but not then, to but you want to believe them and yeah. they're lying they're to you lying about it and you're yeah not to mention we're filming a tv show uh, uh, Oh, correct. I was dating this man on TV. Uh, is <laughs> Which one is it? Oliver. And he's, he's not a cast member. He's not, not a, a cast, cast member. member. He yeah. was on it. What does Oliver look because like? Because of him Maya. Up? Can we bring like, him up? You, you gave him a gift. Hello. Yeah. You brought him on the show. I met him through a cast member on the show. And then in my first season and the second season, like, yes, we were dating. We He was there at the house all the time. He was friends with all of us. I mean, we were fully like a th- little tr- trio. Th- Thruple. A thruple. Thank yeah, you. We're like a little th- I'm always a third wheel somewhere. But my, like my apologize in advance. I just want to see who looks like. I hope it's close your eyes. I don't want to trigger you. Ah, ah, no. Uh, <laughs> hey, handsome guy. Nick. Uh, fuck that guy. No. <laughs> I mean he looks like a narcissist for sure. Like, <laughs> I could see it in his eyes. Good save. Good save. Um, <laughs> I could see it in his eyes. I could see it in his eyes. Man, that, and how long ago was this? Uh I found out in like September about the cheating. Okay. And then yeah, that long I ago. learned the full. Well, here's the thing: like with people that are liars, like who knows if I actually know the full scope of what happened to this day? You know what I mean? Yeah, probably still lying about something. Probably, but it doesn't. I guess it doesn't really matter. But he did send me an email. The top of the year, top of this year, an email. Well, he's blocked on every other I see. communication. I see. You had to get creative. <laughs> um, so he sent me to whom it may concern. <laughs> well, like, I had reached out at one point to be like. Listen, the show's about to air. You might as well just like tell me everything now before I continue to find out like through the grapevine, basically. He didn't. He wasn't super responsive. Months or a month goes by or so. Then I get this email from him at the top of the year. First, he was like, oh, I waited to send this email because it was the holidays. I wanted you to enjoy your time with your family, like because I'm a good guy, basically. Like, go fuck yourself. You didn't care about me. Right. Like, this is all self-serving, but okay. And then it was bulleted 
with every indiscretion, including like IG handles, full names. So you could you go a follow down? them. They could get followers. I don't like, know. I never looked IG up handles? these girls. And like sometimes like, he it legit wasn't gave like, you a breakdown. Correct. Came clean, like yeah, clean. the one clean. line I remember from I haven't like read this in a while, but there was one point where he was like very Hillary we Duff of him. Exchanged semi nude photos like between you know the months of this and this, and I'm like, do. Uh, I mean, I'm not trying to give him a pat on the back. Oh, God. But do we feel like that's the full truth of it all? Like, I don't know. He's so fucking full of shit. I'm glad that you felt almost indifferent and angry about it. Yeah. And like, it's one of those things like, you know, you you want people to learn from the mistakes. I'm assuming once you get over it. this man did not learn. You don't think he's learned? No. I think he's a serial cheater. Okay. Do you think once a cheater, always a cheater? Uh, no. Depends. Right? Yeah. Totally. Like in your early 20s. OK, fine. When you're in high school. But like he cheated on his fiance. Yeah. Let yeah. me so paraphrase. Like, I, I I just in general, if you know, me, I don't believe in like big blanket statements. Yeah. I don't like lumping people together. Totally. You know, it's just like I think as individuals, we're unique. And yeah. like we like to lump ourselves when, you know, when it's uh, in, in all these categories. I think if you cheat, you're a far more likely to cheat again yeah and if you actually don't take accountability and, and it's hard to tell whether they are you know yeah uh, like did he write you for you you know my question in my head would be like why did he write that email in hopes of right. redemption saving face for the show he has a lot of motives mm-hmm. of writing that email that have nothing to do with him personally healing and take accountability yeah, because right. he is a person on this earth just wants to be a better person and hopes that his future partner, whoever they might be, is protected from his past transgressions. And he's like actually in therapy and yeah. actually learning. Like that's a big right. if. And yeah. that's yeah. Um, that's rare. But do right. I believe people who actually, you know, yeah. can fuck up because maybe they have some past trauma yeah, they haven't absolutely. dealt with and they fuck up and they hit rock bottom and actually look in the mirror and say, I don't want to be this, this person mm-hmm. and I want to make changes. Do I think people are capable of that and actually make changes? Yeah. Sure. But I think a lot of people will just hope their partners will change right. and right. just take promises as like some yeah. sort of guarantee. And that never, never. works. Yeah. Is my two cents. I personally was like, oh, I was thinking he was going on the route of like reconciliation. Like they thought that like she was going to like buckle and be like, yeah, like let's Get well, back like, together. Even after, like, but I love how we included links. <laughs> like, it's sick. It's kind of it, funny. It, it, it's, it's, it is sick. sick. Yeah, but you did ask. I did, like, months ago. Right. I like. I was <laughs> months ago. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just like put it. I'm just trying to think of. Who, <laughs> he probably thought he was doing like a good thing. I wonder, like, like, how long that took him, I, or like how I long wonder. he waited on it to send it. Like, did he talk to his therapist about it? Clearly, did they not. think that was a good idea. I like have. Lots of questions, but also like I remember, you know, I didn't have the full story yet. We were still figuring out like what the future of our relationship was. I had no idea it was eleven women at this time, Oof. and he just didn't give a fuck. See, it's deep. <laughs> okay, See, I'm like, it is pretty not deep. Not one, not two. But I originally four, it was like five. only this one girl, and like you know the timeline was a little hazy of like were we like exclusive, all that bullshit. And I remember being like, I'm done. I'm not doing this. And we went to therapy because he was I wasn't speaking to him anymore. And he went to this therapy session like virtually. And he you could tell he thought that we were like getting back together in that in -hmm. that meeting. And I was like, in what world? Like where where's how where does this delusion come from? And even the therapist was like, it was the meanest I've ever seen a therapist be. She was like, you don't deserve her. Like, why would you think that she would come back to you? Like, you actually triggered everything that you have talked about building up. You broke it back down. No, I, I truly can't I'm, imagine what you might be feeling because, like, the question I'd have for both of you is, as people who have been victimized by cheating, mm-hmm. and a question people often ask, how now, in, in, now that you're out there dating, do you discern between um, trusting your gut mm-hmm. and being paranoid? You know, because it's it's yeah. really fucking hard. Yeah. And then in your case, fuck the fact that he weaponized therapy against you. Right. Because some people might have the peace of mind. It's like, all right, well, my partner's really working. We're, we're doing the work. And mm-hmm. if they're doing the work, they can't possibly yeah. want to, like, 
yeah. you know, fuck around. But clearly that's, that's not the case. People can weaponize anything, yeah. you know, and, and therapy can be one of them. And so like, how do you ladies, you know, as you get older and more mature, you referenced your age as being a reason why, you know, like maybe you put up with things that now, yeah. you know, you wouldn't want to put up with, mm-hmm. but how do you go about doing that? Where you know, there's no guarantees in relationships. No matter what, it's always a risk. You know, when you meet someone and you yeah. fall in love, that's just a love's a fucking risk. Yeah. And I mean, so yeah, how but- do you go from trust in that gut of like, I got this feeling that something's right versus like losing your mind because and then blaming your new partner for something your past partner did? I just don't want to give like Oliver, Oliver, for example, any power. Yeah. And so to me, I'm like, I have to empower myself to not to trust that not everyone out there is out to hurt me. Yeah. He obviously like, blip in the radar mistake made a year of my life i not lost i learned something i'm sure i just can't tell you what yet um and (laughs) i'm sure you learned a lot maybe like some something yes it's deep down right now because now the rage is coming back no i hear i'm sorry (laughs) (laughs) it was the picture you had to show his face no no. then i called him handsome yeah i I fucked up (laughs) but like why am i gonna let this one guy fuck up the rest of my life and like what could be promising with somebody else because of his own like he it's his issues at the end of the day like what he did has nothing to do with me very healthy outlook yeah yeah i think more just like trying to trust myself it's hard but also i'm asking i'm asking i'm not gonna drive myself mad i'm just gonna ask and you know that's your opportunity if the person chooses to lie to me okay i feel like i'm probably going to find out in this day and age of technology i'm gonna find out we're also on tv yeah like what did you the, i'm gonna find out but people I, are gonna reach out but also i've become not afraid to like ask the question you know And like not being so intimidated or so worried that I'm going to like ruffle feathers that I'm like, fuck it. Like, what do I have to lose? As someone who I know, I think you'll relate based on your previous answer. Like, I want to I agree with you. You got to choose to trust. Right. Mm -hmm. It's like it's a fucking choice. Love's a risk. You know, you can't, you know. And when you're in a healthy relationship or seemingly a healthy relationship, you want to pride yourself over being like, I want to trust my person. I want to give them a benefit of the doubt. I don't want to be in a relationship where every time they ask to go out, I'm thinking, like, what the fuck are you going to do? Yeah. I've had that used against me, right? Yeah. That trust. So I have learned over the years that like, again, that difference between, well, patting myself on the back for being the trusting boyfriend versus right. being like, I'm sorry, trusting or not, but that's fucked up. Like, why yeah. what, are there things that you would have been okay with in the past in terms of like going out alone or going out with the boys or whatever it is that you pretended to be cool with in the past and now you're just like i i don't put up with that anymore Mm, no but we're really independent like we love alone time so for me i want to be in a relationship with someone that does have boys that they want to go out with so they're not like consistently around me correct (laughs) so it's like no (laughs) you need to go out with the boys because i want to go out with my friends at times and i'm not going to text you back immediately and there should be that trust i'm not changing that like i never look at a significant other's phone i've never done that the only time i did it was when i found out about the i was finally like show me the fucking phone but no i'm not changing that like for what i think uh, personally i'm more confident go have your own separate life because i have mine i will say put up more with like the jealous uh like jealousy from guys when i was younger where like like, they were kind of like projecting their gel their jealous features onto me where it's like oh well what are you doing who are you going with like the 10 million questions i used to accept that and now i'm like none of your fucking business like we could be sleeping together but you don't need to know damn everything that's crazy like you trust me i trust you if i get an inkling that you know things aren't right yeah i'm gonna ask you about it have you ever been in a relationship because to me this was a sign i always remembered it was the (laughs) casual not and non-invite yeah and then they try to convince you that they're not inviting you because you won't have fun (laughs) and it's always like it's like, but you don't like clubs, yeah, or whatever it is, or like, and you're right. like, well, yeah, I'm not like a club rat, but I'll go, go to a club if we're spending time together. Yeah, it's, it's chill. like we're there together, and then you find, and they're like, well, it's boys' night, and yeah. you find, or it's girls' night, yeah. and you find out it's not girls' night. Yeah. It's just like you're not invited. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've never, I don't think I've ever done that, but with guys, I feel like it's, I don't know, it, they have this way of. I don't know. I can just feel like I pick up on like them scheming or going around something. I'm always like, because they're not usually head, that smooth. In my head. Or I'm like, oh, you're mad that I didn't text you back at this time when you didn't text me back. At that time, I didn't get pissed. I just recently told a guy, I was like, look, he was kind of getting like the, the, 
the little jealous notions. And I was like, I you got to chill. Giving it. I was like, I can't do this. If you don't trust me, we're so far early on in this. And you're not my man. Yeah, you're not my man. Did we're you not see exclusive. that meme that's like, unless you're like, basically treat a man like he's your cousin until he claims you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but. <laughs> but it's like, damn. you're my cousin right now. Like, why are you asking me what I'm doing? You don't need to know where I was, what, where I was at this time. Like, I time stamping. Like, I'm not time stamping my night for you. No, either. don't clock me. Yeah. Okay, that's a little tangent. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good to know. I've been actually asking this question of my audience and just ladies in general. Do you two have a minimum height requirement? Oh my God, I, you know what? Not anymore. So I'm I getting, used I'm, to not, now I do, I think. Now you do. Yeah, because I'm like, what is your height requirement? Well, I feel like it's got to be like 6'1 or above now. 6'1 or so above. So I was engaged to like a 5'10 dude. Yeah. 5'10's that was, being generous. Yeah. And, that's true. Is um, that, what's his name? No, no. we were so, not engaged. Okay. <laughs> See, I already forgot his name. Good. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so now, like, well, if I'm like, swiping, I'm like, I'm not swiping for your, because if you're saying you're 5'10, that means you're 5'8. I'm not swiping. I don't want to meet you. And then I'm in heels and I'm so much taller than you. And I'm having to, like, if I have to bend down to hug you, if I have to put, <laughs> if I'm putting my hands physically, like, over your shoulders and not around your waist to hug you, I'm not dating you. What if he is perfect i don't believe in short kings way. i don't know yeah she is like not into the short kings so, anymore because i did it before and like yeah that's true i'm not doing it like i feel was like he, i gotta be pickier now so he's he was five nine <laughs> i'm going to like give five, him five eight. ten you're gonna give him five literally ten. five eight you're breaking the hearts of all the short he's kings out gonna there. hate me but whatever i yeah I so like we're i'm the same five height. eight i'm five eight also and, and I was looking this man right in the no no, no. I look him in the eye and we had like, the same size forehead we could date or when we were dating I'd be like oh I'm looking down on you today like if I'd be was wanting to be an asshole you know <laughs> so yeah we'll give him five nine I think I'm flipped I went from dating guys that are like six five six six real fucking tall and now I'm coming back down I'm like I could do you know I made a joke last year I was like you know what I'm into 5'8". I'm into 5'9". She's lying, though. I think it's... I'm into 5'10". It's okay like to be open to. I'm She's open, open to it. To it. I'm open she'll to it. watch who she marries, watch who she'll be in any relationship with. He will not be that height. I feel Her, like it's something well, we should talk about. Like, it's like girl math, girl dinner. Like, yes. men's measurements. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> the amount of guys who are like, oh, but like... You're t a tall, like five six or five seven. Like, like I'm like, there's that? no such thing no, as there's a tall literally anything. Like, it's a measurement. Correct. Just, just you to, can't be a short five ten. Like you are. Just, you're just not. To, yeah. Just to defend my short kings out there, and I'm six two, so I'm. Yeah, you I've ain't been, even I've been rocking blessed. with them, yeah. really. <laughs> but at the same time, it's just like, do you know why they lie? Because th then girls, we will say no. Because we won't they, 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 like, like, they don't think they have a shot. But they do. I went on a date like two weeks ago with this guy that said he was six feet on his profile, and I showed up. And I, you know what? I still didn't believe him based off the pictures. I was like, he might be like a 5'10 saying he's six feet, you know? So I was like, I'll wear a short heel just to like feed his ego. And so I don't immediately walk out of this date. He was so short. He was so short. But not like 5'5". Five, five. He wasn't 5'5", five, five, but he was like 5'10 on a good day. But if he said 5'8 on his like bio or whatever, I don't know, you were. Yeah, and came taller. That's kind of a. But he would. But you wouldn't. Hot. You wouldn't have. You would just keep swiping. This is true. And actually, I'm. After saying all this, I'm far more attracted to personality than I am to looks. Generally speaking, like I'd like to get to know you. <laughs> you think that's not true? No, I think it's true. But but I'm the same way. But you give me so much hell for it because you dated some ugly dudes. Sierra. Yeah, because they that's have like why. great personality. No, you know exactly who I'm thinking about. And, and he I, did not have a good personality. Okay, I didn't date that man. I met him at a festival for two, a no, day and a half. No, but you guys were talking for a minute. Girl. And then and that was the first time we, okay, the we should okay. not argue. Friends <laughs> argue. It's fine. <funny. laughs> <laughs> like, no, but I love a personality. I love a guy that can make me laugh. So I'm willing to, you know, give up some other features if you have like a bomb ass personality. Because at the end of the day, I'm mean, like, yeah, like I've dated really hot guys, but they were really fucking boring. And I and wanted stupid. to. And stupid. Stupid. Well, you know, because well, the around. truth is, all the the six, all the guys six two and above in hookup culture have just become massive fuckboys. Yeah, because there's like one percent of all men are over six foot. Yeah, yeah there's a name for them. Everyone's going after them, and yeah. there's no reason for them to behave themselves. Yeah, meanwhile, all the five eight guys yeah. are just like, give me a yeah, shot. Yeah, just look at you know, me. Tall, yeah. you know. and they don't have to do any work because people, girls approach them like. Yeah. 
uh, I'm over that. All your tall kings are just getting real spoiled. They and, are. And real... They're, f- yeah. yeah. I don't feel like six feet, six, six two is like obviously tall these days, but like, I feel like unless you're like above six four, six five, then you can start acting like reckless. Uh, but the U.S. population, about 14.5% of all men are six feet or over. 14%? Roughly 1% of U.S. women. Can you also find the average height of, of man in America? Because this is going, going to-, to Russia. <laughs> oh, there too. Five foot nine. nine. Are average. you kidding me? This seems you like that's the average height like of a woman. No, we are both five that's, eight. That's the You're five thing. eight. No, it's like five that. four. So we are also taller for women. Yeah, that's what annoys me. I feel like when it's like the five three or like the really short women who are like, I only date over six uh, feet. We I just agree. talked about just this on our podcast them for the taller but that's women. The with, just that's the problem with dating apps is because they make you think that the only people available are these like tall good looking guys yeah. and they're like they're just hiding on the short yeah like, <laughs> and then you guys when they and the ones who like get through the the the, the dating app wall you yeah. guys are just like fuck you guys how did they get through swipe left uh, no i this i is, really I, did I'm give off the, the short dating apps. guys a chance in my life like okay. they've had their chance well you did almost you did get engaged to one correct so it's like I gave one a shot. Yeah, I gave one. <laughs> no, all, I've dated short dudes, like short, short dudes. Rig- like, honestly, too much. Okay. It's, it's time to give the tall guys a chance. I'm just trying to advocate for my short friends out there. You're you know? not even They're, short. You don't even, you, you know can't what? even relate. You know I'm just trying to pay it for, no, I can't relate. <laughs> I no, agree, I'm I agree, though, because fuck. I've given some short kings a chance, and, like, there was other reasons that He's I didn't want to date them, but, like, you can't <laughs> hate he, him. like, put his arm behind mine. Like, he linked arms with me in the way that, stereotypically a woman, a woman would, would link like, with a man mm-hmm. well, and i that, was like i'm guiding you down the street right now yeah whatever you know you never saw him again i did not <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly it's tough, yeah, it's tough, yeah I'll, I'll talk to my women friends and i'll be like well like why didn't you like him and they'll give me all these reasons and i'm like that doesn't make sense they're like well he was short yeah like, <laughs> you know? that was the okay one. but like the date i just went on he was short but that's not the reason i'm not ever going to date him again it well, was his it just happens to be like if just if you in addition to you sucking if you're also five eight then yeah that's and it's, it's the problem is yeah now it's just like a chicken before the egg because yeah. some of them have bad personalities because they've been just trying too hard their whole yeah. life yeah napoleon yeah, syndrome a little bit of that mm-hmm. all you dog lovers out there have you tried out sundays well if you haven't you are definitely missing out sundays is zero prep zero mess and zero stress and if you love your dog you want to make sure that they're eating high quality food so many crappy options out there when it comes to feeding your lovely canine but not with Sundays. Sundays is air-dried dog food made from the short list of human-grade ingredients. Sundays was co-founded by Dr. Tony Waxman, a practicing veterinarian. Sundays contains 90% real meat, 10% vegetables, fruits, and whole grains. In every recipe, you will find natural digestive aids like pumpkin and ginger, plus disease-fighting antioxidants. I mean, if you love your dog, you want to make sure that they are there for the longest possible, and what you feed them plays such a significant role in your dog's health. And the best part about Sundays is that it's shelf-stable, lightweight, and easy to travel with if you are on the go and is far less expensive than some of those other healthy dog foods out there and less bulky. You don't have to put them in a freezer. You know, they're not they're not delivered with a bu- bunch of like... Frozen packages. Yeah, and... nuts. You know? I will also say your dog's going to love it because I switched Kiki over to Sundays for Dogs and every morning she gets her breakfast. She's so excited to eat her Sundays every single day. Well, we worked out a special deal for our dog-loving listeners. Get 35% off your first order of Sundays. Just go to sundaysfordogs.com slash V-I-A-L-L and use code V-I-A-L-L at checkout. That is sundaysfordogs.com. S-U-N-D-A-Y-S-F-O-R-D-O-G-S dot com forward slash V-I-A-L-L. Upgrade your pup to Sundays and feel good about the food you feed your dog. Have you guys uh, been paying attention to that Michael Orr uh, blindside story? I have. I saw that yesterday. And Wild I'm, story. I'm only reading the head, like the headlines, so I don't know the full details. Jen, give us the breakdown. So, movie came out years and years and years ago. Great movie. Have you guys seen the movie? Yeah. Blindside, Great. one of my favorite movies. Great movie, starring Sandra Bullock. Sandra Bullock as a yeah. blonde. I wonder how she's feeling right now about all this news. Windled. So well, the she's family. Going through a lot right yeah, now. I was like, her husband just passed away. Yeah, I saw that. Isn't that crazy? I didn't even know she was dating. It's been guy. a terrible few weeks for her. Yeah. Honestly. Damn. Yeah, but so the family that adopted him, he's now saying it wasn't really adoption; it was more a conservator. Conservative. And like. That oh, that is like Britney. That is exactly. Britney Spears. Exactly. literally been Britney yeah. Spears. Yeah. Isn't that public record? Like, 
isn't that like a, well, like who something we can the like figure side? out? Didn't they do their research yeah. before producing the movie? Like if they if he was adopted, you would think there are adoption papers. If it was a conservative ship, there's he's a contract. Saying he didn't, he's saying he didn't know the difference between the paperwork no, because he was. Like I get 18. that, but yeah. what oh. does the paperwork say? Is my question. Mm. Like, but and to be fair, they did have to like kind of teach him how to read and write from an older age. So I that, could kind of see. I bet he not didn't even read to, the like, paperwork. I what? wouldn't have read the yeah, fucking I wouldn't paperwork. No, I wouldn't I have read the paperwork. Like, this is a dream come true. Give me the yeah. fucking pen. Yeah. yeah. Right. You know? So I'm just curious what the paperwork says, because from an outside third party, if it was a conservative ship, to me, red flag, just right off the bat. Yeah. Like, like but do you think you would have known that at his age, given like his life experience? No, I don't. I fault the family, not him. Yeah, I would have signed yeah. whatever. Yeah. You know, like he didn't know any better. Like what's a conservative ship versus like how, most of the country only knows what a conservative ship is because, because, because of because Britney, of Britney. Spears. Yeah. yeah, truly. But how at 37 are we just now disputing a conservative ship? Wait, whoa, he's 37. Yeah. He's 37 So that now. means he's they now been still retired. have conservative ship over him. So they are still controlling his finances? I That I don't. That's yes, a great question. because there's a lawsuit. Yeah. And that's the most recent story that the little brother from the movie, mm-hmm. he has talked about it. And he says, first, he says that the family did not make a huge profit. So he's denying that. But then he What's also said- What's a huge said, profit? This right. is a rich family. They Millions. own like fucking Taco Bells and shit. Yeah. I don't know yeah. what, <laughs> but, but like yeah. not a lot of money. Yeah, right? <laughs> right? <I don't- laughs> Yeah, just bring yeah, Sandra yeah. doesn't bring over all this fucking cordi- uh, like, <laughs> or gorditas, um, chalupas. But like, yeah, not a lot of money is relative. Right. You know, did they sell the rights to this sto- story to be written? And well, there be- was a book out of it. The movie was made off a book. And okay. they, I think it sounds like they sold the right for the book. But the point is, like, how much money did Michael make? Right. I don't care how much was total made. Yeah. But if well, he hasn't if made come any, from that's nothing, fucked. Yeah. And, yeah, exactly. Like. Didn't he, he played professional, or did he play yeah, professional? Yeah, he football. was good too. But what he made as a pro, to me, has nothing to do no, with that family. No, that's completely unrelated, yeah. Yeah. Because it's like, even if the family made a million dollars, still, he deserves a piece of that. Two million, does, three million. I which, feel like he should deserve, I, I just, his, it seems fucked up that a family of privilege, right. who just because they decided to do a good thing, Deed, yeah. right? Like, Ooh, it, I got, to me, it's just like, if they took a dollar from him, and again, keep in mind, this this is a family which doesn't seem like they needed the money. No. So what? like, why isn't Michael getting all of this money? Yeah. It's, to his me it's his fucking money. story. Yeah, it's, it's him. Yeah. And like, yeah, they did a good deed. But if the moment you start like being like, how much should I get paid for this good deed? Right. It ceases to be a good fucking deed. Correct. Yeah. It just it 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 becomes a transaction. Yeah. Right. And now that it's a transaction, I got fucking questions. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah. Like he deserves all of that. Not to, not to mention like. I just don't know how I feel about like him being like the poster boy for their family. There's some level of like a race situation yeah, that is like little, making me. It's annoying. Little, it's the, annoying. The white savior. Yeah. The yeah. Well, totally. Not to mention, imagine if they have side businesses. Yeah. The benefits from their businesses they got from the publicity of, of the this exactly. story in the movie. Yes. Is like, like that's also part of profit that should be put in account for him as a trust or whatever. I'm so over the whole fucking like it's even you know when people like go to fucking Africa take a picture with like you know a black kid and like (laughs) and they post it on their Instagram I'm like oh I'm so fucking over that the whole the way that it presents it's like well just do it in but like do it in silence I get like a movie was made off of it but like if you're actually gonna do this and like make a movie off of it like don't be dirty behind the scenes with a conservatorship and like low key trying to like well just in general like well there's that as you mentioned obviously it has the race element yeah but. Like celebrities in general, yeah. like I don't give a shit when you're volunteering at a soup kitchen. No, I don't. No, uh, I don't. I think it's like, weird do that to take in pictures. Fucking silence. Yeah, yeah, I think it's weird to take Why pictures. Why are you in that inviting TMZ oh, I'm, at a, there. I'm at a children's hospital. Like, so yeah. Okay. It's just like the fuck. Like, like you, oh, you brought your PR team. Yeah, like, it's so fucking weird, and it happens all the time. And the and it's shocking to me that like it works. Like fans will be like, oh my God, you're like greatness. And I'm like, it's so fucking for performative. You know what? My other pet peeve is like people who take pictures in the hospital with like, with their like, when they're like, like, holding the hand. Yeah. Like when the, when there's like a patient, you'd go to the hospital, especially if that patient is not awake, not alive or like whatever, like taking pictures in the hospital, I think is also weird and cringy and like, Oh, so who snapped this photo of you? Is it worse than (laughs) crying on social media, telling a story? Yes. 
Yeah. Have you ever done that? No. I've never done that. Oh, thank God. No, I know. Um, I was like, you, the way you looked, you were kind of like, wait a uh, second. But no. that whole like, I just, I gotta, I gotta be honest like, with you guys right now and talk. <laughs> it's like, well, and you're, you're crying. Like, or the compilation of like crying videos wait, throughout there's one like that, a year or something. Yes. There's one that's going viral of this woman who's like very slowly taking her, her wedding ring off. Like she's just going through fresh through a divorce. But like as she's taking the wedding ring off, she's flashing back to like pictures of their wedding and like them kissing on vacation See, and da da da. So... And she's crying like deep tears. And people in the comments are like, "You posted this for what? Like what?" But yeah, but who are you saying time out in the middle of your tears to like take <laughs> a photo and like it's so fucking? And you cut this together yourself. Like, like you edited it you and edit. you then chose to post it. Well, I got really sad here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like, ooh, that's a really good, like, the tears falling just, yeah. like, perfectly. Or, like, the cheek. silent tears. Those yeah. always get people the most. Yeah, I'm, yeah, am no. I a bitch? Yeah, yeah. we are, but, yeah. like, it's okay. No, I don't think we are. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. But he's good. always advocating for everybody. We can't trust him. No, he's an ally of the short kings. That was one. What? He, I'm just looking out for a couple shorties. I just think... <laughs> but also, no, but, like, if you do know anyone who's not exactly six foot, I'll totally give them, you know, a lunch. A coffee date, a walk, an ice cream date. A and walk. People hate those. No, you know, what, uh, what's your favorite first date? Hmm, I do like drinks, but I like something more simple nowadays. Like I'll do like a coffee date. I think that's chill. But I do love a walk. Going for I a like walk. A, yeah. But what, maybe not what, on a you're first say, date. You have a, I, you're going to think I'm crazy. I, I have been advocating for Zoom dates or FaceTime dates. So yeah, I think that FaceTiming is actually nice if you meet like on an app to yeah. like, conf- like, hey, what's You're up? Meeting Can a you stranger chat for, for the a first time. Why the fuck are you investing all this time to get ready, go out, spend okay, money? I'm not true. mad at that. And I, I honestly am not mad if it's like spontaneous. Like, hey, do you have a quick check, like sec to chat? And like, boom, you see each other. You're real. No catfish here. Like now we can go have drinks. But I don't. See, okay, I feel like if you're having drinks with me for my first date, it has to be before dinner time because otherwise I'm going to get hungry. Yeah, you're going to have to feed me. And you're going to have to feed me. That's one. But two, I think my favorite dates are like activities, like something like playing games, like going to the arcade, going bowling, like mini golf, something active. You love a game. I love a game. It makes the conversations easy. And I'm competitive. It's like it's easy for banter. Like I think I just think it's conducive to like see, i'm trying vibes. to sit down and look you in your eyes uh see you just yeah. want to sit there in silence yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not, in, not in silence but i'm trying to see what you're about i'm trying to pick up your vibe yeah okay. that's why i like coffee it's chill also if you're i think people don't know, know how to interpret coffee dates these days as if like are they romantic I'm vetting are they you. Not? it's a vetting process yeah. like yeah, no. it's 30 minutes to an hour you're most likely not going to get another coffee true if so, you didn't meet in a public area where you guys had this like chemistry where one person went up to the other and you had this really cute moment and you already know there's chemistry yeah. there and you're both excited then like yeah short of that like it is a fucking interview yeah. you are qualifying them you're fucking strangers yeah and like you don't yeah. know anything about we're just, them yeah we're just trying to see if we vibe at all enough to go out to dinner yeah. You know, can we sit through a dinner? Can all their app drinks? says is that like their height and that they like to travel <laughs> and they like to laugh. You know, yeah. and you're, like it's right. just like, like that's, it's... that's every fucking bio. It's some True. version of like, well, you know, right. I like to laugh and have fun. Yeah. I like you. I like when they make me laugh and I like and to travel. And I just want yes. someone to travel with and. Like that's every fucking bio. I fucking hate dating. It's so it's true. Dating apps, they're awful. I used to be pro dating app. I become anti dating. I become anti. I'm always, it's like, it's fine if you have to, you have to have self-control and it's got to be just one way of that you're meeting people. But yeah. now it's just like people rely on it too much. Yeah. I feel like guys in person, like when you're going out, they don't approach women. And it's I feel not, like it's yeah. become this like no. epidemic where guys are, yeah, I can understand being intimidated or like being scared of rejection, but guys don't really approach. And like, I feel like Fun stories that I love hearing, especially from like my dad or like him having to like shoot a shot like mm-hmm. there Cute. weren't cell phones. And yeah. so there are a couple of things that go into it. One, I think the society that we live in, yeah. too, I think dating roles yeah. have become so kind of blurred right. in terms of like the criticisms gone both ways. And yeah. like, listen, there's a lot of bad actors when it comes to men, as we know. Yeah. At the same time. I think some of the information that's floating out on the Internet, like you know, people making TikToks and like some people like 
you know, I've seen TikToks of women being like, if I don't know you, don't fucking talk to me, <laughs> ew, you know? And yeah. so like, there's that type of energy that's being yeah. put out there where I think in general, like men are just like, I don't know. They don't fuck, know what I don't, to do. I don't want to. That also being said, you two obviously attractive people, right? And so I think attractive men, just like attractive women, attractive men are used to having people come up to mm -hmm. them. I think the more attractive people are, the less fucking social skills they tend to have. Oh my God, I say Amen. that's a model uh, complex. Yeah. It's a model complex. And it's just like, they're just used to like smiling or putting out the vibe. And so when you have like kind of two good looking people, there's a good chance... Both of those people are just kind of like, they're just standing in the corner <laughs> and just like looking and they're like looking the other way. And yeah. like, there's just a lot of like missed, uh, missed connections yeah. with those types of people. So I think it's a little bit of, of both, but yeah. And I just think society, we have become worse communicators. We're buried right. in our phones. Yeah. We don't know how to talk to each other. Even friends don't communicate over phone. They're just texting and yeah. shit like that. So having kind of like putting yourself out there right. and putting yourself open for rejection. I think as a society, we're getting worse and worse mm -hmm. and it was always a challenge. Yeah. And so I think it's that. Yeah. I kind of love the old school, you know, a guy coming up to a girl, which girls approach now too, which is a cool. I don't do it, but I probably should try it. Have you ever approached a guy? No, never. Oh, see, I will pick up a man. Yeah. What's your go-to line? I don't ever have one. I just always say something you so snarky. Chirp, yeah, you chirp the you chirp I'll the just, fuck we'll out chirp of that. you. Yeah, like. Honestly, all you really have to do is say hello. I don't even think I really? usually start with a hello. I'm usually saying something the, so sassy. At yeah. the end of the day, if if someone is attracted to you, you just got to say hi. And I, this is advice I would say to guys, too, where it's just like, don't call them hot or objectify women. Just be like, hi and smile. And if they're interested, they'll let you know. It's kind of that simple, right? I mean. Yeah, it should be. Yeah. I'm saying this Were like you an I, approach her? No. It's so interesting though because <laughs> but it's easy to fuck, you know, I I can look back and realize I I have done it. Yeah. But no, I'm not good at having But, but are your palms sweaty? Are you like Yeah, fuck yeah. yeah. Everyone gets nervous, yeah. you know? Oh, like yeah, cute. I'm it's like so you cute. trip over your words and yeah. shit like that. But and, it's so weird that like in person a guy can come up to you and say hey and really like just smile and that's it. But if your first line to me in a dating app is hey, I'm not responding. Sure. Well, because you have no, you can't, you know, this guy walks up to you that? and like says, hey, and kind of gives you a look. And, you know, if he's tall, he's already in. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I, people talk about privilege all the time and I have a lot of it, but my greatest privilege is You're being 6'2". Yes. I'm not kidding. <laughs> is I, being 6'2". 100%. Yes, yeah. Like, because you just, I just know that like. Top of the food chain. Truly the I, top. When people realize I tell him, I'm treated differently. Yeah. <laughs> Facts. It's true. I mean, I. Right, like they're talking to you on the phone, but then they're like. When they see you in person, it's like, oh, damn. All right. I was shocked 100. at how tall you were, to be honest. So, <laughs> wow. Imagine just showing up. <laughs> like the curtains open. Yes. That's all it takes. Like, oh, you're Here tall. Like, <laughs> you must be good. <laughs> he could do no wrong. I mean, I, a little, that, I, it's not right. You I know? mean, hey, honestly, get in where you fit in. Like, don't yeah. reinvent the wheel. Yeah. I, I mean, I've been blessed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm blessed. so hot. Uh, oh, my God. No, I'm just tall. <laughs> You're yes, you're also good looking. So in a package, I, but I yes, think it, it works. I'm telling you, because I know because when the I, my bio literally says taller in person, it's because after going on TV <laughs> and people seeing me on TV, they thought, you know, all right, fine. And then they meet me in person and go, oh, oh. Yes. <laughs> OK, you were like, you're taller than I thought you were. And like taller than I thought you were when it comes for a woman to me says I, you're hotter than I thought you were. Correct. Wow. That's a, are you, I think that's exactly what I mean. But are you means, snubbing though. them? Or are you like, yeah, are you like, le were you like leaning into it? No, I don't usually lean in. Yeah. I, I can be very guarded at times. So yeah, in general, I, I'm a kind of sort of sarcastic dick. Yeah. I don't try to be. Yeah, it just happens. Just Same. Like it's in but my just nature. like you get painted you get that way also sometimes yeah. too. Just my aloofness. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. No, we, we, we get, get it. it. <laughs> well, uh, speaking of dating and off, dating apps, we have, our we have a off. caller who needs some help. Are we ready to give us some advice? Yeah. I, I go one or two ways. Well, listen, I wouldn't listen we, to we me. We speak from our mistakes. Okay. Who, who would you rather get advice from? Someone who is just like, I found the love of my life at 18. We've been in a perfect don't, relationship. Yeah, We've never had that, problems. Bitch. Or would you rather get from someone and be like, I have fucked up so many times. And yeah, like, I, that you know, person. Like, and well, I'll probably fuck up, fuck up again, but I can tell you the mistakes I've made and yeah. why, you know? Yeah. So here okay. we are. All right, let's hear it. I've fucked up a lot. How's it going? 
Hey, I am Julie. I'm 33 and I need help crafting the perfect text to someone who I've exchanged numbers with, but has unmatched me on Hinge. Okay. All right. Well, there is no perfect text. Let's kind of rewind for a second, yeah, right? Anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need details. You matched with a gentleman. Yes. Right. And how'd that conversation go? It was really nice. Um, we He responded kind of immediately. It was not this past Friday, but the Friday before. It's uh -huh. been about 10 days. And every time I would say something, I got a response. Got multiple tech, you know, multiple responses. We had talked about cooking a lot. And then I said, maybe I'll get an invite over for dinner one day. And then I didn't hear anything until the next day. So I said, was that too forward? He goes, not at all, just bad timing. And then he said, I would love to set up a date. We exchanged phone numbers, texted a little bit. I said I was going to be out of town. I had a work trip in Wisconsin last, the end of last week. So I was out of town for a few days. And he said, we can text and keep in touch until then. Okay. And then we talked a little bit on last Sunday and then nothing since. Who sent the last text message? Me. That's why mm. I didn't say anything again. Because I was like, I was I, waiting to say something. When did you notice? I was waiting for him to kind of say something. Yeah. When did you notice that he unmatched you on, is it Hinge? I went on there probably the so we exchanged numbers last Sunday. So I, probably on Monday, I was just on there. And then I was in there and I noticed it was unmatched. So I was so like, one day that's later. I was kind of like, um, yeah, the next day. after we, The next day after we exchanged phone numbers and texted, then he had unmatched me. But you proceeded to text, correct? While you were on your trip? No, we haven't said anything since like it's been like a week. Since the unmatching. So, so Sunday was when you exchanged phone numbers and you texted a little bit. Then he didn't say anything yep. so later on Sunday. You were the last text. Then you went on on Monday and saw he'd unmatched. Right. Okay. But I still have his phone number. So I was like, well, I don't know if I should say anything. Not that I have his phone number. And, you know, it's not like we don't have any point of contact. <laughs> not that I have his phone number. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, yeah. That, I, don't, I, I don't like I this man. Like, Listen, yeah, so now I'm back. <laughs> I had this happen to me once for a hot second. This is years ago. But in my single days, I was uh, on Raya and I matched with at the time, someone I was like, kind of a fan of. And <laughs> I was like, oh, okay, shit. And then we messaged back and forth. I thought the banter was good. I was like throwing out some game, whatever. And, <laughs> and then I was like, let's get together. Very similar to you. She's like, ah, cool. I'm out of town right now. I'm working. She was like filming some movie or some shit. Oh, and then yeah. like, I'm back and I'm like, great. And then I was like, all right, well, here's my number. Let's just get off the app. I, you know, I, if you heard me talk, get off the fucking texting apps, you know? And then like two days later, I got this random ass text from her, you know? Mm -hmm. She's like, hey, it's so-and-so. I'm like, oh shit. And then like, I replied like, I don't know, 20 minutes later, playing it cool and shit. Yeah. <laughs> Never like fucking heard from her. And I spent like, Three days being like, why would she text me and then to not, not respond? Post. Yeah, but when you know. Nick's leaving out is that he sent like fifteen dates. No, of that's, well, that was the joke. <laughs> but I don't know that she knew that. <laughs> it was so like I. It was funny. You and said she that said, was okay. funny. Did she laugh? She at never it? replied. She never she replied. Did. No, she did reply to that. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was oh. in between. That was on the app. It was basically like. <laughs> It was, I was like, wait, this is amazing. It was basically like, uh, it was around Thanksgiving when we were yeah. talking about getting together. And I was like, how about this date? And she was like, how about that? And then as a joke, and I was, it's like, if you're going to joke on text, you have to make it obvious. Yes. Yeah. And I was taking a risk. It's like, either this person's going to have a sense of humor or they're not. And so I was like, all right, well, I'm available. And I listed like 15 <laughs> days or some shit. And it was just the point of like. Yeah, like it it's was, excessive. It was yeah. Funnily, yeah. I'm putting myself, you know, like she laughed, whatever, gave me her number. You know, I don't know. And the point is of telling this story is I have no fucking clue why she didn't respond. <laughs> Maybe she had just got out of a relationship, jumped on the app, matched with a handful of people. Then like her ex freaked out and they got back together. I don't know. Maybe I was one of five people she matched with and I was her third favorite choice. You know, maybe she like matched with me and then like Googled my ass and was like, I'm not going <laughs> to respond. I have no fucking clue, you know, why she she did it. And we can spend a lot of time being like hypothesizing. Well, they sent me their number and yeah. we will make this whole thing as if like sending their cell phone number is like giving your, them their like as if they gave you their bank account and social security number is if like they right. have given you all this trust you know it's just like i know it like is confusing and you're like why the fuck would someone say this but unfortunately in this kind of like dating you know hookup culture dating app society everyone has like you're on dating apps how many matches do you have i mean 
I have two different ones, so I'm like a total of like four right now. Oh, so you're on two different apps. You have a total of four matches, yeah. right? And so I don't know how yeah. it's going with these other guys, but like you're also not in a, you you aren't committed to this one guy. Yeah. You, you were feeling him yeah. out. You could literally get off the phone with us today, match with some guy who you're just like, damn, you know? Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, <laughs> if you were talking to this guy and let's say he hadn't ghosted you, you could be more excited about someone you might match with five minutes ago. Yeah. and. So the point is, I don't know what happened, but it's some version of that where he just like doesn't know you, doesn't know anything about you. You guys talked about cooking. Meanwhile, he's been also living his life, matching with a bunch of other people. And, you know, you just got lost in the shuffle. I say yeah. just I say delete his I number, delete, block him, move yeah. on. He don't deserve you. The, d- the dating app, some people love the dopamine hit, you know. Yeah, it's, it's like, like the yeah. instant validation it's a, it's that you surge. can get. It's yeah, true. the instant validation. And they're like, oh, okay, well, I got, we, we were texting one of our got our number. Okay, that's it. But in actuality, they don't want to spend the actual time that it takes to put in to like organize a date or go out on a date. And or actually just get to know someone. That he's not going to try to pull this shit again. Right. But if you feel like, because I always try to give myself two options. Because it's like what I should do versus what I want to do. do. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, if you want to send him a text message, you'd be like, hey, do you want to go out? Then fucking do that, too. Like, See, I don't know if I would of- send that. I would more be like, hey, uh, what happened? Like, Earth 2 so-and-so, well, at this point, are you there? I no more ask. small talk. I wouldn't ask. I, at this point, I wouldn't ask. Yeah, I said no point, more small talk. I was talk. just thinking, like, you know, if just to be like, hey, are you still... Do you still want to go out? Yeah. Do you still want to set something up for next week? You know, that would be kind of like where I would be coming. But from. you should have someone that's so interested that like makes the effort to tell you True. that they're interested. It's so early on. And if you have to wonder even right now, his interest level, why like don't play yourself. You're you're worth more than that. Yeah, queen. We we true. actually gave similar <laughs> we gave similar advice to a caller a couple of weeks ago. It did get a response. It didn't get a date. So just so you know. But it's like, you know, you kind of fight fire with fire. What do you want to do? Yeah. You want to text him. Yeah, she definitely, yeah, she wants the perfect text. A little bit, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what, wants, is, what do you I, think I would you would say? It, I, would, I would, you know, it's a similar advice we gave somebody last time, but if you text him, you text him as if like, like a fuck boy. Yeah. And, that, and a fuck boy would, it would, would, hmm. would text someone, what are you up to tonight? I just got, I got, yeah. you're, you're bored, you have nothing to do. Right. And you're seeing, if, is, does he live in your, like, you guys live in the same area? Yeah, he's like 15 minutes from me, which was another. I was like, wow, this is cool. I live in a very small town. We have a few clues with this, guys. But the clues that we do have is anytime you have put out a plan of yeah. of meeting up, he, took he, a while he didn't respond yeah. immediately. It, he, he immediately changed his behavior. And yeah, he was like, oh, just bad timing. But I don't know. Usually yeah. it's not a coincidence, right? So this guy has kind of like, you know, and you can just assume everyone on a dating app has fuckboy mentality. You know, it's, it's just what it yep. is. This is hookup culture, you know, and if you like someone and you're having sex, when they have, you're, a, you're the fuckboy, you know, so to speak. So it sounds like anytime you're like, hey, what are you doing this Saturday? This guy ain't going to make a plan with you. Now, right. as we all agree here, like it's probably not in your best interest to text him. But if you are going to play the game yeah. and you want to like just like lead with your heart, the best thing you for you to do is just like act like a fuck boy. And that mm-hmm. is like hit him up day of yeah. act like you have nothing better to do and see if you can like catch him on a boring day. Yeah. You know, because that. Not Mo- a bad plan. I do like that. Yeah. Literally just say, well, it is a what? bad plan, W-I-D. but it, it might work. What? W-I-D. <laughs> you up? Yeah. yeah like, Eggplant. W-I-D. I was like, don't you even kick. <laughs> yeah. Don't spell but- what out. You need to like minimal letters, minimal letters. Just like what's, W-I-D. what are you up to? Yes. Yeah. But just so you know, you are Future pursuing someone who is giving you a bunch of bad signs. They're like a breadcrumb. Yeah. Oh. What I do you like about him? What what makes him so fascinating that you are willing to put all this emotional this energy be, into him? I knew this was yeah. going to be the Nick question. Well, that's a good <laughs> what question. do you really know about him? You, just, you know, like it's, I don't know. It's just like maybe the Other possibility. The fact that he's kind of like my age, he's in my, you know, he's in my town. Yeah. Proximity. It seemed like, you know. <laughs> You're 33 well, yeah, and you, uh, where do you live? <laughs> You're selling yourself short. He's, do you? he's alive. <laughs> he wears shirts. You know, like. <laughs> Yeah. Do you yeah, have any mutual like, friends since you live in such a small town? Is he even, is he hot? Do you I think know. he's hot? Yeah, he's cute. Mm-hmm. Well, I would, yeah. Well, well, let me ask this. <laughs> what are your dating goals? Great question. I'm definitely looking for someone that's relationship minded. So, okay. okay. He's not. I mean, we hadn't really discussed that yet. Yeah. 
But it's good that you know this. My, I think all, I think we all agree yeah. here. It's just like, listen, you're single, you're on the apps, fuck it, YOLO. If you want to text someone, even though they're kind of giving you some bad right. vibes, yeah. text them. Do but it. what you have to stop yourself from doing is kind of what you're doing now. And while we appreciate you calling is like, it's it's like cannibalizing your emotional energy. You're thinking about it a lot. And instead of yeah. investing in yourself or your girls mm-hmm. or whatever it is, your job, this is consuming your energy. So the question is, when you text this guy, can you be like, all right, this is my last shot. Mm-hmm. I'm going to put myself out there and this is all am I going to do? Or is texting him, getting him to respond back a day later and, and re kind of vigorating this conversation Is it going to get you down an emotional rabbit hole where for the next three weeks, you're just going to be constantly like asking yourself, what does he mean by this? Why did he do this? Why did he do that? And that's what you want to avoid. So you have to ask yourself, how much self-control do you have with this situation? Because like texting him once and kind of seeing if he's willing to hang out, fine. But every situation of the world has started like this, where you've ignored the red flags and you have pursued him enough where the person on the other side of the situation is thinking, I don't know, I basically found someone who's willing to hang out with me whenever the fuck I want. Right. They're willing to have sex with me whatever the fuck I want. I don't got to do shit to keep them around. And all right, fine, we can do that. He and should you- like you more than yeah. you like him, mm-hmm. especially in the beginning. Yeah. Always. And it's almost where I'm at now, like, because it's been a week, like, you know, the first day after it happens, you're just kind of like, why? What should I do? Should I text him? Now that it's been a week and like the more I talk to you guys, the more I'm like, you know, I mean, I, yeah, I don't know that the urge to text him is there because like I've always been in the school. I thought like if someone wants to, they will, they will. make you a priority, they will, you know, yeah. So, yeah. and listen, he doesn't know you, you so it doesn't make sense for him to make you a priority. Honestly, I've been the unmatcher on a dating app. Yeah, we, we all have. <laughs> it's, 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 all it's dating culture. It's dating apps. They, they make it easy for all of us to, to act this way. But the point is, he's acting yeah. this way with you. And as far as you are concerned with him, he's not giving you the signs that you should be looking for. And that's just something you would just have to like take account and ask yourself, how much are you willing to invest in someone you know nothing about who's giving you nothing, you know? And I just hope it's not a lot, you know, so like sending a text, no big deal. But we all know how this works and we all have been (laughs) you before and we all like look back and realize I spent a fucking month like energy talking to friends, be like this. And it's listen, it's fun. It's fun to like have a little drama with your friends. What do you think? You know, but at some point you have to realize that energy you're investing in this person is valuable and it could be going to other things that are far more productive in your life. Who, like you said, I barely know anything about at this Preach. point. Literally right, yeah. nothing. You probably can't even cook. <laughs> <laughs> you Literally not. Say that. Period. <laughs> what is the perfect text for her? What should she text him? If, get drunk. Not get. If, if you I, happen I was like, to a be drink drunk. should be involved. In yeah, this. I was like, <laughs> if you just like have to do it, Nudes. you know. Maybe, no. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what a hook. If you have to do it, you know, okay, you know, maybe. Get a little tipsy and literally keep it short and simple and just say, what are you doing tonight? Like, I think it should be so. Yeah, I feel like if I like, don't ask tonight, question mark, period. Yeah. Seven o'clock, whatever. Yeah. Are you free? Yeah. I like that because it's casual. Yeah, it's like I like the idea the, of like to the point drink tonight as opposed to like the what are you doing tonight? Because I feel like that could maybe That's be open misinterpreted ended. as like. Right. Come, I I, unless you the, just want to hook up because then think that would you should work. Go, I, I think but, even what are you doing? A question is more passive. And I just think in this situation. Yeah. She should be less passive. It's I'm bored. What are you doing? Yeah. It, there should be some kind of like, yeah. I got nothing better to do. Or like, literally, you up. I mean, that's kind of funny. You yeah, know? no, that's, like, yeah, I'm into that. <laughs> something that kind of like, something that he's going to get and go, did a fuck boy just text me? Yeah, you know, like, 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 play, like, he's getting a taste of his own medicine. medicine. At his own game. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. This whole like demure, like, hey, what are you doing this weekend? Yeah. We? Like, that's just not, that's what he's used to. That won't surprise him. And again, this is game playing. So just we right, yeah. But we know you you are you are saying you're willing to play a little bit of a game, and we're just saying play just, it. It's fine to play a little, but like you got to have some self control, yeah, and bound yes boundaries for yourself. If there's no response, it's just no. You know, then you're fucking that, done. I'm, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Girl. yeah. Then you're done. Yeah, yeah. you're on literally yeah. two apps. Keep going. Yes. You know? trucking along. Go have yeah. girls' night. Go out. What's the biggest city closest to you? Um. Well, I live. Um in one that's about like a it's like 45 minutes away it's like fifty thousand people great yeah that's not that far also you can get on a plane (laughs) (laughs) 
Nick's uh, like, change your location on Hinge to New York. <laughs> uh, honestly, I'm going to tell you something. Open that. Open your fucking the little parameters on miles. Talk to people from all over. I, I couldn't agree more. Yeah. Like, open like, it up. We might Why as not? well take advantage of the technology yeah. it gives us. And True. it brings a yeah. lot of bad things. But like. Why not? You're on the dating app already. So yeah. don't pigeonhole yourself into like your hometown. Now, or just make sure you FaceTime real quick so you don't get like. You know, yeah, catfish and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, don't be. Yeah, and have some fun. It's just good practice to talk with people. You know, it's fun to meet someone far away and just you talk to them yeah. over the phone. They live in a cool city. <laughs> then that's two birds, one stone. Yeah, there you go. And you already travel for work, so like you're on the road. Yeah, yeah. Make it about you. I can't stress okay. enough that I don't think you should invest a lot of time in him. All right. On to the next. He, he most almost certainly just started kind of hanging out with someone. Yeah. And then she was like unmatch these people you know oh yeah because <laughs> that's what that's what girls do that's what know. we do you've never made a guy a, a... no ah. i haven't when you first started dating someone you aren't like are you still in the apps i feel like it's a very common question no i feel like i typically don't say anything but they'll say something to me first yeah because they're usually the more insecure ones anyway you guys you guys aren't normies you're you're your tv stars <laughs> This is how we've always been. I can promise yeah. you that. TV, yes. I don't know about the star part, but... Oh, I'm a to, star. Yeah, you're a star. <laughs> Have fun with it. The moment you start going, you get confused, or if it makes you feel worse about yourself, or just kind of makes you feel icky, you just move on. It's That's not a signal to your body to do more. It's a signal to your body to let go. If it's not fun... I'll shut it off. Just shut it off. It's not worth your time. Yeah. Who's trying to be at, in fight or flight this early on? <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. All right. Good luck. Keep us Thank posted. You. All right. Bye. We'll see you. All right. With uh, the time that we have left, <laughs> can we talk some summer house shit? Yeah. Let's yeah. More. I have like rapid oh. fire questions. Oh my God. Come on. Genevieve's we can be so Gen- Genevieve's a, she's I'm, been... I'm an OG summer house yeah. fan. Oh, yeah. wow. I, I used okay. to work at NBC and my first day going into the office, they were all talking about it. And I was like, what the fuck are we talking about? And I watched like all four seasons that had come out at that point and like, three days because I was like I have to fit in (laughs) I was like the show is awesome okay are we ready okay go ahead okay let's see nothing too mean okay don't don't worry don't worry okay we're literally called the mean girls welcome to be mean no we're (laughs) literally called the mean (laughs) girls girls. yeah (laughs) okay okay no 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 I I won't be too harsh um who do you think is the worst cast member I'm just kidding don't answer that yeah I was like um okay so obviously filming the new season right now winter house is probably coming out in a few months is there anything you can tease to us about that? Like, are there any new cast members? Are there any like big drama plot points? Um, I can't tease a damn you, thing yeah. in the hopes of no. keeping my job. Yeah. Okay. In hopes of keeping my job. And yeah, I can't even say anything. Yeah. How, How about are this? you even in LA right now? Uh well, we um, took a plane. I'm <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> no. Yeah, I'm leaving tomorrow night <laughs> and getting back to New York Thursday at like 1 a.m. Okay, just in time for summer Friday. To drive out. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> What's the relationship like uh, Sierra with you and Lindsay? Since of you both were apparently, according to my notes, were hooking up with Austin? <laughs> <laughs> Nick. Is that true? <laughs> Nick, Nick, Nick. Um, we're actually good. We're on the up and up. We're on the up. We oh, are wow. good deciding to like put some of this past drama aside. I think everyone's he- tired of hearing about said guy. And I'm tired of talking about him. I'm not harping on it anymore. We're moving on. You know, Lindsay's about to get married. It's in our past. It wasn't like our brightest moment, but we're moving on. I wanted to ask about the wedding. Do you think there's going to be anyone that doesn't get an invite? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Can you say who? No. (laughs) No, I didn't even think we could say who. Okay. Do you think Lindsay and Danielle's relationship is salvageable? Because like that was my scandal. Like I saw them meet. That was like heartbreaking last summer. I think so. But it's going to take time. Like Danielle's definitely she's. Capricorn. We tend to hold grudges for sure, but I think that we're sharing such a special experience. Like you kind of always find your way back to a person, I think. And they've been friends for so long. So yeah, slowly but surely. Bring me up to speed. What was the drama? She had some (laughs) opinions about so she being Danielle. Danielle. Okay. Lindsay is now engaged to Carl. Carl. I got that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Who Danielle, Danielle used Carl. to date. Carl's like. Correct. But that was like the, the fact original that they guy. dated. Years ago. I don't even think should be a part of the conversation. What? The fact Fair. that they dated? That Danielle and Carl dated. I think it should be. I don't think that has anything to do with the breakdown. No, but no. Okay. So now Lindsay and Carl are engaged. 
Danielle had some opinions on their new relationship last summer and she vocalized them. And, you know, Lindsay kind of perceived that as it not being supportive of her relationship. I can see why. Yeah. And how could, even if it doesn't have anything to do with the fact that they dated, how could it not be interpreted that way? Uh, I just feel like it, it, there it was, couldn't. but to me, there was like always this like underlining, like basically suggestion that Danielle was jealous of yeah. the relationship that Lindsay and Carl had. And I really don't think her voicing her concerns was from a place of that jealous. makes sense. Yeah. That's just, what, like, that's why I'm making the distinction. Yeah. Like, yeah. Danielle was very much in her own happy relationship True. at the time. Yeah. She wasn't ever like, fiending for Carl or Your like team Danielle aren't you well she's not a yes friend which I actually appreciate Danielle's not a yes friend so like everything that she stands want, her ground yeah she stands her ground she has an opinion and I yeah. think that that's great but it's a matter of timing and and like being a little more elo- yeah, eloquent delivery yeah. tact, tact. Yeah. yes all those things that uh sometimes were disregarded <laughs> <laughs> just not there yeah. yes yeah okay yeah <laughs> As someone who's become recently a Bravo fan, you know, I come from a different kind of reality TV world where yeah. it's like this bubble you're in and once you're in it, once you're out of it, you're out of it. And it's not meant necessarily to be recurring. You know, yeah. obviously we've, not a lot of us have gone back for different iterations of mm-hmm. The Bachelor and the show, but with Summer House or Vanderpump or yeah. Housewives, it really seems like the lines are very much blurred between your life and the show. Absolutely. I, you know, and I know some Vanderpump, uh, some of them are friends of mine. Yeah. And it's just like when I talk to them about like their lives, a lot of times it just feels like they're talking to me about the show, but it's just but still their, their life. life. But then at the same time, I'm thinking like, you know, with Vanderpump, obviously, historically, incredibly incestual. And it's just like, I'm thinking to myself, why do you guys keep fucking each other? <laughs> you know, like there's so many other people. But then I, I wonder, so like how much like subconsciously are there decisions that they're making? They're doing it for the show without even thinking I'm doing it for the show. It's like a, this, it's, I'm the, fascinated by like the, the psychology Bravo, of it all. Yeah, the Bravo sphere is incestual. And I think, yeah, you have that perspective where it's almost easier to relate to someone who's in it. Exactly. As opposed to going and finding someone sure. who's normal. Or like dating a fan of the show. Right. Or dating a fan of the show. So, yeah. Or the one, the, when they pretend not to know you. Yeah. That's the, correct. That's, yeah. Like, I've never watched your show. And then it's they're like, like, so how's Kyle? Yeah. It's like, yeah. wait, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but like the guy with blonde hair, yeah. you know, like, I don't, I don't know slip. who he is. I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't they know. slip yeah. up and you yeah. always catch on. You're like, yeah. mm, so yeah. you never. Yeah, it's easier to date someone who's in it. They understand it. They know what filming's like. There's nothing that I have to explain to you. So I kind of see how like they all s- sleep together. And like, we kind of, our show is a little bit incestual. Not really my style. It was something I kind of had to figure out when I got there. and you know, hands off on it now, but I don't know. I just kind of easier. It's easier. Yeah. yeah. I saw this uh, as a Bravo Babes uh, tweet account. Bravo <laughs> Babes has been very giving for Bravo news. <laughs> if you're out there, Bravo Babe, thanks. Bravo uh, cocktails. But uh, Caitlin Collins, she's like the up and up on CNN. She is apparently like hanging out with Shep. Is Have that you... the girl in the green skirt? Well, on this picture, Wait, it's let just me the see... back of her. Yeah, it's let just me the see back this. of them. But Caitlin Collins, she's like the yes. the young, like up and coming talent on CNN. She's like a big mm. deal, We've like not. CNN and like yeah. I know, don't us know. reality TV people. We're not usually like yeah headline. We we're we're, uh, <laughs> we're like list? yeah, yeah. <laughs> scum. <laughs> like, yeah. We, to be well, up. as I as I say, when it comes to reality TV, uh, we 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 are granted a ton of access yeah. and and zero credibility. Yeah, and we have to usually overcome that second part yeah making but, do with that but have you, so you guys are unaware you don't know hey you don't have any tea on these two people i don't mm. how 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 connected or how much rumors do you guys hear between shows i mean i think we hear more than the average person sure. obviously right. um i i follow all the bravo accounts but i i saw that um bryn from real housewives of new york yeah had mentioned that she was into shep and then there was like a girl in the background of a photo that, that he posted like and everyone thought it was her. And then she was like, I would never be caught dead wearing that outfit. And it turns out it was Miss CNN. Interesting. You know, Shade needs Ms. to do CNN's some squats outfits. is really my biggest takeaway of this photo. They all that. skip leg day. <laughs> it's like the pants falling off. Bro. No, but they, like, they all skip leg day in Charleston. <laughs> yeah. Or like ass day. I don't know, but listen, she needs to hold on. Just hold on. I don't know. You know, that seems 
Is risky. Shep a, he's a risk. He's a flight risk. Well, but he says it and he owns it. Like he's having fun, you know? How old is Shep? Maybe she is too. Or, yeah, that's Maybe just a what? couple of fuck boys hanging out. Yeah. yeah. You know? no, just hang out on the couch. Don't hang out outside. Yeah, I just hate like people speculating. Correct. That, to, which obviously I'm in the wrong industry, but like. They right. are. Are they holding hands there? Uh, They're close We're not enough speculating other than the fact that they are. Hanging out. Hanging out. Doesn't it look looks like, like a no. close walk. His it's hand a looks walk. empty. Is that New York City? <laughs> yeah. It looks like he's grabbing for her hand. No, her I think Her hand's in front stretch. of her. They're very close. Exactly. No, they're probably doing that like cute flirty walk where you like graze each other's arms and shit. Hold onto a finger. Yeah. Not like a full yeah. hand. Yeah. It's Can't flirty. do too much in public. But we know. We don't know anything about that. Okay. I had another question. Do you guys actually like Loverboy? Yes, I love the limoncello. Oh. You love the... I love the spritz. Uh, but I'm very... I tell them all the time, like, my favorites. <laughs> or I'm like, eh. I, the spritz... This one I didn't love. The limoncello, a passion fruit guava is That's my favorite. You love. Yeah, okay. there are, like, three or four flavors that I really fuck with. Yeah. I love def- the espresso martini ones, but they're so hard to get. And they're oh, so are strong. They? Yeah. Yeah, many yeah. a night off of those It's like two drinks in I one. was yeah. never an in espresso closet. martini drinker until I started on Summer House. And I remember like my first few dinners, you guys would all shit on me for not ordering yeah. espresso martinis with you. And I was like, fuck it, I'll just order an espresso martini. Yeah. And now I drink that shit all the time. All the time. <laughs> now Kyle canned it. And it's yeah. like, yeah. I've I'll- never been to the Hamptons. Oh, Is it must. like worth it? No, no, it's really not. Okay. I don't think I was actually you live having in LA. this chat. Well, yeah, I, I mean, like, I, such I love New York, to. and every time I go to New York, the last thing I want to do is like drive two and a half hours. Up. If I want exactly. to go to the country, I'll go to like fucking Wisconsin. Or yeah. And I think you're better off yeah, there. It's like, I don't think the Hamptons is super picturesque. You know, I think it's one of these things that New Yorkers have just done for a while, and it's nostalgic. But I don't. Something to say you did. Yeah, but I don't think like I don't think their beaches are amazing. Unless you're going to like what what's his name Mike. Ruben's party, like the Hamptons are not that special. Yeah. Like are we we're not fired. I love that for me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, we started heavy, we'll end heavy. How do you feel the most misunderstood for both of you? Where do people get you wrong? Um, I think having such a sarcastic, dry humor does not serve me well. Yeah. <laughs> so it's very I first off, I'm an acquired taste period. I'm hard to understand. Like it takes a minute to like really warm up and understand if I'm like even fucking with you. So I get that. But I think it's just, yeah, the humor of, of me, my essence, how funny I really am. (laughs) (laughs) Your and your humility. Yeah. yeah, Humility. We love a humble girl is yeah. It just gets lost. And also that it compassed with the fact that like we are portrayed to be literally like dumb as rocks. Yeah. On the show, yeah, yeah. I no, and that and that's everyone. Or, yeah, you know. Or it's, do you think it's, it's particularly you guys take n- an extra? No, I would say like generally speaking, they don't like. Yeah, they don't. Yeah, reality TV is not looking for. Oh my depth. god, they love a dumb moment. I Dumb-ish. remember like yeah. the last. I didn't know what a lobotomy was. Oh god, and they're like, "But you're a nurse," and I was like, "That is an out- yeah, an outdated, an outdated procedure. procedure. I've never ha- dealt with a post lobotomy patient, and I can't tell you the specifics of it." So sorry then they're like questioning if i'm even an actual nurse i'm like it's not a real procedure and you have like, like a wealth of medical information you really do i call you for everything yeah like i'm a fucking icu nurse i worked all throughout covid like saving lives yeah I, like yeah but you know whatever but you didn't lobotomize anyone but i didn't lobotomize <laughs> anyone. <laughs> i was like no but i can fucking run a code if i needed to well, that's why we watch reality tv though it's yeah to disengage from yeah. reality and judge other people yeah we right. like it's like react watching reality tv for the people who love it and i love that you love it y'all because you listen to this show and and i love reality tv but if we're being honest with ourselves like it's easier to judge other people than not judge ourselves and reality tv is really just again that reality tv and it's a glimpse into all the fucking fuckery and silliness that we do and then kind of dumb moments that even smart people to your point will say like dumb shit yeah because like we're not we're not all encyclopedias yeah and and everyone has we just like skipped a day in the sixth grade we're just like i'm sorry (laughs) about a fucking lobotomy yeah and like it's just i didn't need to know there's um, literally no reason why I needed to know that. But now, 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 now you know. I know. But I also think, I think for me, people on, rea- I think people would say that I'm like, have this super hard exterior and I'm like a bitch and I'm not nice probably. And I'm not like warm and fuzzy. Mm. And three out of a few of those <laughs> could be true. 
But I think it's more like I am Which naturally part? gar. Well, I'm not warm and fuzzy. And no, I'm not warm have and fuzzy. I'm a dick, but it's just like I'm. I'm just not interested. Yeah, that. In- or like I'm walking into a room. I don't need to be the center of attention. Yeah. Like I walk into a room sometimes and I'm analyzing everything that's going on in the room. So, no, I'm not going to be like the most outgoing version of myself. I'm also catching vibes. I'm a little hype. I'm very hyper vigilant. So I'm just assessing at all times, always. So there's like a lot of shit running through my head. And that may- might get in the way of like, oh, my light, fun personality with my real friends. I'm also... Yeah, like with my real friends who I'm most comfortable with. Sure. That's so different than me just walking into a room and you not getting the reaction that you thought I was going to be or like what you thought or or what they think I am on TV. Or how you should be. What's your resting gaze look like? What's your, you know, your resting face? What's yours? What's all our, what's your resting face? Do your resting face. No, mine. I I look like I hate everyone. I've been watch. I've like never you looked see at the myself we so cut much. Of ourselves. Oh yeah, I I look like I hate all of you. It's really <laughs> bad. Your, yeah. Mine is just. Yeah, she does. She looks like she hates me. Little Maya. indifferent to the situation. Mm-hmm. So like when we would film the first season, Amanda would say to me, "Platypus, like you look like a bitch right now." <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> Like, uh, we'd be in scene and she'd be like, you need to fix your face. No, like a lot of times they cut together our facial expressions, which I think is such a cheap shot. Because... Yeah. It's like, normally I'm not even listening no, to you. filming all your own facial expressions. <laughs> yeah. in the and show, I'm yeah. super expressive. Like, oh, you can we make totally, the, oh, we... we make crazy faces. <laughs> but when I'm trying to like actually just be in, like engaged in engaged. a situation, like someone could be talking. It's always like some emotional moment where someone's I'm going to get crying. Botox and put my eyebrows up here or something. Because like. <laughs> people aren't happy maybe that's a th- yeah i always look i didn't realize i how grumpy i look constantly i know <laughs> i debated i was like should i do like a little injection just on the side little. of my mouth because i'm just like i look like no you're human 24 7 oh. embrace it i thought I, I, you know what i think it's weird like everyone has a resting bitch face like, i think I, it's weird for people that walk around in public smile. yeah my sister does that i think that's so weird well, when I moved to New York, I would smile on pe- at people on the street and mm-hmm. then nobody would smile back. And I'd be like, no. well, I just wasted a, a whole flaw. smile on someone. And then, so and then, then I just the next stopped. block, they say you should smile more. Yeah. I'm like, uh, if you tell me to smile now. Why aren't you having fun? Yeah. <laughs> I was. Like, right, you right, I really was enjoying myself. Uh, who in your cast maybe skipped more school than they should have? Like, they also don't know what lobotomize it means. And... Yeah, who awesome. skipped more school than they should have? Sometimes I would say Kyle, but he's, he's so, so fucking oriented. smart. And oh, he he's smart. like, yeah, but he's just like a big goof and is always just saying stupid shit. Yeah, he doesn't take himself too seriously. So he doesn't yeah. present himself well, as such. So it yeah. can feel a little light at times. But he's but, smart. But he's smart. He is smart. He went yeah. to school. He will tell you all the time. Yeah. Also humble. Yeah. Also, yeah. also humble. Also yes. Humble. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, ladies, this has been so fun. Yeah. Yeah. Blast. You that. guys have a podcast. Yes. Which I'll be on. Yeah. yeah. Soup's excited. Can't wait. Yeah. yeah we're, we're dating. Plug we're, away. Yeah. We're getting our time in with you while we're in California. Yeah. <laughs> it's called Codependence. You can follow us on IG at Codependence with a T-S, two underscores, and TikTok, yeah. and on YouTube. We just kind of talk about dating, being in the city, trying to figure our shit out. We don't have the answers to much, but we'll... Oh, talk it through gamut, so people you know? can live vicariously through you yeah yeah we try to you know <laughs> offer our dating mishaps but also just family life work work nursing cooking yeah okay try to do a little bit of everything well everyone go follow their show go follow them and where can they find you on social my instagram is sierra miller with three underscores i'm m y allen okay where are those underscores at the end beginning middle sierra miller three underscores at the end okay okay <laughs> Two or three. How do you feel about those underscores? <laughs> I now? fucking hate them. Yeah. I only have the underscores because Sierra, that bitch. It's Sierra. She, she took my name. Well, she's older. And I took her name. Well, yeah. it's been a pleasure. <laughs> <Gonna know you're laughs> yeah. I'm sorry about your Instagram handle. Yeah, it's okay. Everyone, go follow their podcast. Uh, I, uh, I, I'm going to be on it, so obviously it's going to be great. Uh, <laughs> Ooh, super humility. humble over here. Yeah. There, too. <laughs> yeah, very uh, don't forget today. to send in those questions at asknick at thevowelfiles.com for all things Ask Nick, texting office hours, mediation, you know the drill. We are going to be live tonight at 9 p.m. Eastern for another episode of Better Date Than Never. Be sure to tune in to that. Uh, we are also dropping an update special behind Vile Files Plus tomorrow. So for all of you who love those updates, we have a bunch more. Get excited. They're great. Just go to vilefiles.com to sign up for Vile Files Plus. It's free to sign up. Like, come on. Like, what are you doing? You're missing out. Bye.
Hey guys, if you loved what you listened to, make sure you hit that subscribe button below. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time.